What show are we doing tonight, Mike? Roast Mortem. Hey, everyone. Welcome <laughs> to Roast Mortem. My name's Tom. Yeah! I'm Travis. I am your Cody for this evening. I'm Mike. And tonight, in studio, digital studio, we have very, what? We have very special guests from the Colton Podcast. This? Colin, thank you so much for joining us. What up? Hey, guys. How we doing? Hello. Welcome, sir. So uh, this is like, this is a weird moment because we actually have someone on the show that knows his shit. You <laughs> brought somebody onto the show that could tell us we're wrong. Fuck you, Travis. Oh, that was the one thing you had to not do. I will not do that. I promise. You keep drinking. Do it. <laughs> Colin, tell us a little bit about your show. I, I love it. I, I, think you, I think you're giving uh, Dan Carlin a run for his money. Ooh. Wow, geez, that's I don't know. I don't know. Those are uh, those are big shoes to fill. That's a high praise there. Uh, thank you very much. I I love your show, guys. It's um, oh, thank you. It's fun and informative and kind of crazy, which is always cool. Oh, uh, but I really go. love the artwork too. You, I don't know who does your uh, your Instagram artwork, but uh, it's Travis. fucking insane, dude. You know, well, I have a lot of pictures of penises on my on my desktop. <laughs> It does seem like that. It does seem like that. Now I've got to ask: Are they are they are they taken in your your studio or are these clip art penises? Well, some of them. Some yeah, of some them. of them filmed in front of a live studio audience, just like Bob Saget was. Um, I I would assume they they, they look like Mike, so I'm sure they're all just uh, you know screen grabs from Mike. Yeah, you know, perfect specimen penises. <laughs> My acorn penis. So yeah, well, let us let our, our viewers know. Cauldron, what's about? Cauldron, it's a history of the world, battle by battle. We do, um, or I do a, a deep dive on a particular battle. It doesn't have to be, you know, it's not necessarily a world-changing, decisive battle. It doesn't have to be uh, anybody famous in it. Just a little bit of a story about uh, a different battle from history. We go... All throughout history, we've got ancient Rome, Vietnam, World War One, um, all uh, you know, all different countries. Uh, I'm working on Kokoda Trail and Rourke's Drift right now, um, so we're kind of bouncing all over the place. And your voice is beautiful. Yeah. So I was going to say <laughs> between <laughs> those two voice. things, you've got to be hooked. If you care about history, you have to check out Colin's podcast. Um, so thanks for joining us, Colin. Yes. No, thank you guys. Thank you very much. This has actually been a uh, a work in progress because Travis and I hooked up um, last year, almost yeah. a, a, maybe even more than a year ago, about doing something on uh, Tsushima together. Yeah, I, you, I I reached out to you, and I was just in the middle of moving out to Antifaville, and things just <laughs> oh, kind man. of fell apart. Uh, <laughs> so, but maybe <laughs> one day do. we'll come back to those weird Russians and their travel around the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sweet. Uh, uh, speaking of which, how was your week? Uh, we're going to start with our guest, Colin. How was your week? Uh, it, was, uh, it was filled with fish. I'm a fishmonger by day. And, um, Whoa. So just slinging lobsters and haddock all week. Oh. Um, nothing particularly interesting. Although, actually, I just did a uh, recording. I'm covering Rivoli, the Napoleonic, um, the Italian campaign. I did an interview Hot. with a guy over in England the other day, and it was um, it was a lot of fun. He's, he's an interesting cat, and uh, I think it's worth a listen. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and uh, find that out on Cauldron Podcast. Sweet. Dude, I Thank don't you. think I don't think that you could be more stereotypically Maine right now. You've got the <laughs> hardcore history. You got the beard going on. You're like getting that lobster. Throwing I was gonna say you have a lobster around. Beard. <laughs> It's almost a stereotype. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the other podcasts I do, a few of our listeners know Heavy Hole. Um, even though that's death metal, grindcore, and uh, just general debauchery when it comes to auditory uh, sens uh, sensory sensations, you have uh, a quarter of it is based on fishing. Because Big Will and Justin spend more of their time fishing than doing anything else. And maybe they're listening to Mortal Decay's albums. Maybe they're listening to Dead Infection while they do it, but uh, fishing is, uh, y yeah, I, I, I share a love for that because of the Long Island thing. Um, yeah, they're, they're Long Island fishing. This guy's like perfect storm out there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Yes, I know, I know, but, you know. Are you guys Clooney, dudes? <laughs> All right, so, hold on. Speaking of people that hate Long Island and fishing and fun stuff and, you know, normal things, Travis, how was your week? Oh, dude, you know, I, speaking about being on the water, <laughs> I'm going to be on the on the digital water, the mechanical water. I ordered a rowing machine. 
Yeah. Oh Excellent. my god. What's yeah. That? I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just trying traps. to. While I'm rendering, I'm just going to try to get that perfect stroke. Hey. I'm going to be the Michael oh, Phelps of rowing. Yeah. Each of his forearms is nonsensical. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Phelps, Michael of, Phelps of rolling. <laughs> okay. Horrible. I hate that. <laughs> it's a word. So yeah, good. that's pretty much it. Good. Uh, so your how water's about the in the Jesse mail. Owens of tree felling. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. The Usain Bolt of Uber driving. Yeah, Babe Ruth of curling. I uh, love it. Uh, Cody, how was your week out there? My week sucked like donkey chode, dude. <laughs> I got for you. family in and out of the emergency rooms. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that. It's just like no one's dying yet, but. Oh my God, I have, I have been through the gauntlet, my friends. Uh, enough time to eke out the fucking research for my portion of this episode. So, got that going for me. Which Hell is yeah, nice. my friend. <laughs> which is nice. Yeah, which when is you say, nice. When you say no one is dead yet, the yet is in Comic Sans, correct? The We're yet having fun. is fucking redundant. Gotcha. That goes true for everyone on this podcast. We're not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, how was your week over there? What's going on, skateboard land? It's too bad. Yeah. Did you do any kickflips this week? I, yeah, I did a couple. How's your knees, motherfucker? Nice. My knees hurt still. Are they uh, Are they 55 yet? Uh, Mid-40s, I think. Mm. But yeah, I really can't complain. I, I ate some bad Subway. That was like the one highlight. I was like, damn. I got let down by the fucking <laughs> Subway. Bad Subway you know, was the highlight of your week? You know I never, I never experienced you know it before. I was like, holy crap. This is like hot trash if, on a bun. If in 2021, Subway... <laughs> Has the courage to still ask you for a dollar? Patreon.com slash roast mortemcast. Please throw a uh, throw one or two dollars out there if you have uh, if you have uh, the spare change to be soliciting Subway in 2021. Put a meal in our stomachs. Disappointing children year after year. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Tom, what about you, dog? <laughs> oh, thanks for asking so much. I was really waiting for it. Um, really, I've I've been in. Um, uh, okay, so. You guys have heard of this whole master race, right? The PC master race that's out okay. there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. right. I think we're going to be talking about that a little bit later oh. in the episode. Oh. Well, maybe oh. maybe I'll do the light version, warm everyone up. So the PC thing, like, Good. you know, you build a PC, it's everything you want. Oh, it's, oh, it's working so well. Oh, I got laptops by Acer. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> so what, what I've been experiencing is um, this is my fifth laptop in, in the matter of two months. And I landed on a Mac after several very high-end PCs and people telling me, no, this is going to happen. This is working fine. Everything is fine. My pride is so injured right now. Yeah. Uh, just problem, speaking Tom. about it. That's why, um, yes, I am. How hard is it to get an erection? It's, it's extremely hard. <laughs> it's extremely hard because it's all about driver issues. Every time it's driver issues. In short, uh, I'm back on the Mac game. I'm here. I'm cool again. You could talk to me. I'll probably be <laughs> writing my, my script treatment. As in a Starbucks, as soon as they open, as soon as Antifa leaves, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then yeah. um, you live in Brooklyn now. Yeah, there, <laughs> dude. I'm in Brooklyn. I am Brooklyn. Okay, Tom is Brooklyn. <laughs> so here I am. I am now. Um, I've gone from PC master racist to uh, PC master racist. Um, in a very short mm -hmm. amount of time. Over yeah, your five vinyl laptops. collection. So here is, what you're telling me is your vinyl collection has grown, and you've bought indoor plants. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see them from here? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. They they're, like, they're on the other side of the computer, all these Tom's indoor plants. No joke, I have an avocado tree that I move uh, at different points of the day to get the most sun. But let's continue here. Let's not. This isn't about me. This is about history, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's start the show. Enough of this shit. Shall we? Okay. So we're doing another, what do we call this? The Master Series? Not class, because that's, I don't no, know. Master Class is taken already. Master, Master series. series. I think we landed on Master Series. It doesn't we matter. We have our shit together. You're Fuck listening. Off. So we're doing another Master Series tonight. We're going to be talking about uh, soldiers, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to call it now. We're talking about soldiers. Yeah. Not just any type of soldiers. We're talking about World War II. The, oh, the fuck. Big, the war that end all wars, but the other one that <laughs> after they said the war that would end all wars. Right. Sequels that are cool. One. Sequel. Those. Sequels. The rare sequel that's better than the original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you more can action. Thank the Thompson please. submachine gun for that. Less gas, but um, overall, much more eventful. <laughs> Still poison, but less gas. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay. So we've got three. Because Mike, I don't know what did you do, but Mike, did you did do any research? He didn't uh, do his research. I didn't know how to do one this week. Sorry. Oh. <sighs> Good job. The dog, the dog ate your computer again, Mike. Yeah, I, gotta, yeah, I was watching too much John Sins, and I can't. My computer's <laughs> fucked up. 
Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> well, too shiny. I apologize. So I know, we've, I got, know. we've got three soldiers here. I, we've got the good, the bad, and the, the scummy war criminal trash monsters. Yeah. Um, so, and with that, I, you know, we're really entering some weird territory, some fun territory, but I wanted to give our guests the opportunity to be like, what order do you want to see these guys in? Because we've got so, like, <laughs> we've got, uh, we've got good, we've got neutral, and we've got terrible. Shall, should we like give a one line pitch to sure. Colin so he can? Yeah, I'd love right. that. I'd All love right. that. Tra- Travis, you go first. So, Sum up your guy. <laughs> my guy is an SS officer that the Nazis were ashamed of because he was so terrible. Really? Oh, wow. That, okay. That's, that might be a little rough to start on, but okay. I like this. Uh, my guy is um, a Korean that goes down in history as the most bullied individual of the entire Second World War. I like that one. All right. All right. Um, my guy... He's the good guy. He killed the most nazis, and uh, he beat his wife. Uh, <laughs> was she a Nazi? <laughs> we don't make know. sense if she was That's a Nazi. Back That's then, not. We're not getting into that. I'm just throwing it out there. No questions. Was he a drunk? Stop it. Stop now, Mike. <laughs> well, I would prefer to. F- I'd like to start with our. Um, tragically bullied Korean friend. Really? Uh, yeah, I win. I win, motherfuckers. Suck it. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I have time to get more drunk before I talk about terrible stuff. Oh, should we start with Travis? No, no, no because I'm going to do this and then get ripped for Travis and Tom's presentation <laughs> because I've had a rough week, believe you me. All right, so Cody, who's our first idiot on the chopping Let's get block? into it. We're talking right now. We're talking about Gang Kyung Jong. And this is the most bullied motherfucker of all World War II. That sucks. Strapping, strapping, strapping. Yeah, Other than the Jewish people, right? <laughs> well, here, my Allegedly. caveat for that is he's the most bullied combatant. I'll okay. say he's, he's the most Mike, bullied Mike, do you want combatant. to explain what combatant means? <laughs> oh, is that? It's ally. Could, no. Right. Still uh, working on comrade. that Comrade. <laughs> or Nate is like Cody, Nate. Please, I enlighten us. Before. A combatant <laughs> is somebody na- that combats, Mike. Okay? <laughs> because the word combatter is... Dirty sounding, I guess. It's okay. So we have Yang Kyung Jong, born March 3rd, 1920, in Japanese ruled Korea, also known today as Best Korea. <laughs> <laughs> little, little is known about Yang's childhood. It was presumably humble and uneventful. During his teenage years, some pre World War II tensions are boiling over in the area. Yang's whirlwind misadventure starts when he is approached for conscription by the Japanese Imperial Army. Now, for those of you that don't know, conscription is forced labor that may or may not include some, you know, gunfire. Uh, The glorious United States refers to this as a draft to make it seem uh, an easier (laughs) pill to swallow. It's like, oh, I want a lottery? What do I get? (laughs) Dude, I'm a first draft pick. Hell yeah. Yeah, we'll give you 15 grand a year. It's fine. Do community college, too. How's that, Mike? That sounds like a fucking deal. (laughs) You just have the most precious inputs. Uh, Specifically, Yang was conscripted to the Kwantong sub-army of the Japanese Imperial Army. Yang is rubbing shoulders with the infamous Unit 731. Who knows about them bad boys? Not good. Not good. I I believe they they referred to people as logs so that they weren't uh, personalizing or humanizing them. Ooh. Because they were doing dirty things to those logs. Yeah. Not like the Ren and Stimpy log. Like he's your friend and he <laughs> oh, rolls downstairs. No. Well, if you uh, if by friend you mean somebody that you like, you know, put antifreeze into their blood system, oh. uh, use liquid nit- nitrogen to freeze their hands off and then hit them with canes so their wow. skin just breaks off like glass. Oh. Uh, deliberately infect them with... Um, uh, bubonic plague or oh, do live um, uh, not uh, what, what do you do with a corpse what do, what do they do with it that's they, an that's an autopsy or a necropsy autopsy. the uh, the one when they do it alive that's called vivisection yes live and vivisections without anesthetics yes whenever a therapist asks anyone what your biggest fear is the answer should be vivisection Yes. <laughs> Not dying alone or like having unrequited love or or or, or 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 going mute with regrets. It's goddamn vivisection. 
I, I think you're spot on there. Being sawed open alive is your worst fear. I've also if you think if you think your girlfriend not loving you is your worst fear, no, it's vivisection. Well, congratulations, she doesn't love you. Uh, get used to it. Yeah. At least I'm not being vivisected. Yeah, I've also heard that, that uh, if you try Salampas, you're you're uh, using a product that was tested on POWs oh. uh, by the Japanese. Apparently, it is a Japanese. And let's say the icy hot was not as cooling and warming, or maybe more cooling and warming back oh, in the day. Human research pays off. Well, I mean, uh, if if any of you have ever used um, uh, aspirin from uh, was it Bayer aspirin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was basically discovered and formulated by a company called IG Farben, which was the financial backer and owner of Auschwitz. Oh, no. Oh. Way. So for the last 75 years, anytime an old person has clutched their heart and chest in pain and then reached for the Bayer aspirin to save their life, some poor uh, Jewish person was tested on to discover the, the life saving abilities of Bayer aspirin. Colin, so is the lesson you're trying to teach us here is that these old people, when they feel the heart attack coming, they should just accept it. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> I second like go into that long good night. Just, just yeah. go Tuck with and it. roll down the Lights stairs. Out. You already right, have so, misery ahead. Just cut it off. So our boy is hanging out with some no good Japanese boys. Yes, those are the egg- 731 are the eggheads upstairs. But our boy Yang isn't an egghead. He's kind of a fucking grunt. So all he does is security for the eggheads, but he's still letting the eggheads do the vivisection, antifreeze, like torture testing of POWs at this point. Jeez. He's a safety when man. Secu- when I say security, I don't mean building security. I mean like border patrol security, if you catch my drift. It's not a bouncer. Uh, no. Well, bouncer for like national borders, if you want to think of it that way, Travis. Oh, okay. Fair enough. They're having a and the border, uh, the border in question is the just fucking had this. It was with the Mongolians. Uh, it's the river named Kalka. And the Mongolians and the Japanese can't decide, like, oh, it's mine, it's mine. No, it's mine. Uh, the Mongolians are like, this is my territory. The Imperial Army is like, that's Japanese territory. But here comes the Russians, and they're allies with Mongolia, and the Russians are just like, this is our territory, comrades. <laughs> da, 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 da. They are fun. They're, yeah, they're, they're having great. a great time. I love yeah. them. Da suka suka. I love that. Suka. I love that squat that they, they can do so easily. Rush B, do not stop. <laughs> Those are the Slavs. This is the Slav squat. It's good. Yeah. Uh, May eleventh, nineteen thirty-nine. The Battle of Ka- Kalkin Gol is underway. Our boy Yang is doing his best to keep mongrels and the Soviets at bay. I said mongrels. I hate that mongrels. <laughs> <laughs> that was racist and total. I'm glad we broke the cherry with an accident. I guess it's fine. I mean, uh, my he's doing his best. It's my my, my up, script Brody. is 90% racial slurs, so it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you didn't go first. Um, we're not canceled just yet. I'm trying so to get Mongols canceled. and Soviets, Yang's fighting him, he's doing the best. But the Soviets have these shiny fucking weapons that give them the edge in this skirmish. The Soviets brought artillery, air support, and armored vehicles to this fucking party. So they're like, ah, comrade! <laughs> uh, before this, the most dangerous thing Yang had to worry about was... Uh, Mongolian camel raids with, uh, you know, bolt action and rifles. Dude, not me, a huge thing. Let me tell you though, those Mongolians. If you ever see them, let them into your house because they will make you some perfect beef. <laughs> that beef is tasty, dude. Mongolian beef. Yeah, they'll take your daughter, but leave you some delicious beef. Yeah, hey, that's whoa, a fair whoa, trade. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so these fuckers are. You know, in track suit, track suits, shooting artillery, shooting their <laughs> artillery like a shot glass of you know borscht flavored vodka. Like, I'm just Ugh. imagining the Red Army all in track suits. That's fantastic. Y- y- they weren't. <laughs> they were red, clearly, right? <laughs> red Adidas, there red track go. suits. We're having we're having a great time out here, <laughs> berating so women rushing. and hating gay people like it's our <laughs> like it's uh-huh. a, like it's our job. This is what it is. So these Soviets are fucking shit up, they're drunk, they're winning, because they have technology in, on their side, and Yang is like, guess I'll die now. <laughs> and, you know, the Red Army is like, oh, no, 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 comrade, we won't kill you. We have slave labor that needs getting done in this gulag. Welcome. It's no sandals, but welcome. That's so like, nice I'll just of die. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I I don't need to do that. Yeah. I don't want to build a retaining wall around your, your master's garden. I yeah. want to die. You ever get sent to a gulag, Mike? I wouldn't not want to. It looks miserable. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's a fair this, assessment. <laughs> yes. This isn't a 1v1 gulag where you get let go after you yeah, kill the respawn. other guy with random You get weapons. like fucking killed by like a tiger or some shit in there. There's no respawning. I don't think there was a single tiger in a gulag <laughs> ever. Are they wait, Siberia, wait. Siberian, Siberian tigers, tigers are a thing, so maybe he's onto something there. Oh shit. All right, I'll take Colin a back Burke. seat. We do See? have we we do have someone who actually knows history. Look and at this. He's got my back. As, yeah, as opposed to me who pretends very well <laughs> sometimes. Or at least I think I do. I'm just imagining this whole time, and Cullen, you could probably prove it at the end of the episode. I think, uh, what if Mike was like the most astute historian on the show <laughs> the entire time? <laughs> I'm kind of like, just never uh, knew. he's what's just his being name? playing dumb. He's what's like a historical guy? rain man. No, uh, Ben Affleck. Not Ben Affleck. You're like Ben Affleck. <laughs> yep. He's a historical Ben Affleck. Yep, 100%. You got it. I like this. I like this. Dude, you're Bagger Vance, all right? <laughs> you're basically oh, Matt out. Damon. I'm like Matt Damon. That's who I'm like. You're like Matt Damon in uh, the, the one where he's a small person. Okay. He's like Matt Damon in Team America. <laughs> yeah. I'll and take Matt it. Damon. It's fun. Oh, so At least he's rich. Yeah. Your boy Yang is in a stuck in a gulag for like a year, an entire year. And come 1942, Ava Braun's boyfriend uh, starts getting a little uppity. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he starts fucking with the motherland. And the Soviets funnel prisoners who are willing to fight for their freedom from the gulag, you know, to the fronts. Mm -hmm. And just as a quick mention, as a prisoner slash soldier, you don't get the best kits. You get the rifle huh. they used to stir the borscht uh -oh. in last night. <laughs> Jamming rifles You get shit. the ammunition that was left in pockets and then thrown in the laundry. You get that shit as, like... I don't want to say conscripted because it's not a draft anymore. He's prisoner and being, you know, asked to fight. Jeez. So, you know, these, the Soviets tried doing the Soviet thing and, you know, pitted our boy against uh, the Wehrmacht. You know, so they moved fronts with him. It's like, uh, we know we picked you up in the fucking, you know, what would be considered the Pacific Theater, but you're fighting goddamn uh, the Wehrmacht over the, the, the Nazis. Over on the European front now, Yang does, and Yang does, is just like I don't understand Russian. Does that mean? <laughs> does that mean that he got a free ticket on the Trans Siberian Railroad? <laughs> oh yeah, let's say he did that. Uh, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. Let's let's say they lashed him onto the fucking roof of the train. Imagine oh, I'm just God. imagining Yang as like an insta influencer right now. He's like, I just got a ticket on the Trans Siberian Railroad. You want to see my story? <laughs> it's He's come just a long outside way. between cars because that's all the room. There How is. many followers do you have? Well, at least they didn't have no TSA. It's fine. Just go no travel shit. somewhere. That sounds like fun. These borders? Entirely made up. <laughs> Just go wherever you want, <laughs> asshole. Yeah, Globalist. Right. Shit. <laughs> shit was easy back then. So easy. Look how easy this guy's life was. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, it's it's like world just got the train. <laughs> no, easy it is. Just adventure? <laughs> no adventure one adventures right? anymore. <laughs> you know who adventures? Trust fund babies. You know, yeah. you know who's not fun and cool? Trust fun babies, okay? Yeah. Let the rest of us adventure for once, please. <laughs> Even if it's at gunpoint, I'll adventure. I'll adventure too. <laughs> I'll take that. Explore new places. I'm down mm -hmm. to double barrel. Let's go. <laughs> so Yang is like, gulag life sucks. I'm out of here. Bye, bitches. And the Red Army sends him to the Eastern European Front, and there he uneventfully patrols for about a year. But then February 1943 rolls around and your boy Yang engages the Nazis uh, during the Third Battle of Kharkov. This hot slice of action goes down in Ukraine. It's the Soviets and their combat prisoners versus the, you know, meth head goose steppers. Mm. The Nazis. <laughs> Wait, right. Kharkov, isn't that a gun in Call of Duty? The what? Um, I don't know. I think it is. <laughs> uh, All the Russian guns end with NOV, like yeah. Kalashnikov, Dragunov. Well, uh, is, is it, what is gun in Russian? Is it Nov? Yeah. That would explain Duh. a lot. Maybe, yeah. But AK Look at Tom's etymology here. I had yeah. Russian food uh, this etymology. weekend, so I'm just going to say yes. <laughs> I'm trying. You, I that think that we should move along, because right. this is ridiculous. We don't what know what, what this you, isn't what a gun eat? show. Come on. Pew, pew. This is my uh, PP2000. So the Soviets do their thing, and, you know, 
It's just like, we, 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 we win with manpower, comrade. So they sent all of these people, prisoners included, to fight the Nazis. Um, Do not the, stop. The Soviets outnumber the Nazis just under six to one. It was, I did the math, it was like 5.8 to one. So Jesus. very, very much outnumbered. There's a half a dozen fuckers for every Nazi out there. Wow. Thing is, the Red Army didn't arm all these men. <laughs> God. <laughs> because they're the Red Army. I can believe it. Typical um, Russians. The Nazis gave their uh, guys tanks. Hugo Boss. Yeah. yeah so, Hugo we Boss. Have, <laughs> so we have all these Russians pretty much with only Molotov cocktails trying to hold off an entire rolling fleet of panzers. It's not going to happen. Mm. So even though outnumbered nearly six to one, the Nazis defeat the Red Army with their panzers, inflicting casualties ten times greater than the ones the Nazis suffered themselves. So this is, like, the historical equivalent of that, like, Bruce Lee scene where he gets a bloody lip and then just starts breaking, like, eight <laughs> pairs of legs. And he's like, Wah! Yeah. He's, a, he's a, he, this, uh, yeah, regular old Jonathan Wick. Very good. I like that you're proper about it. Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Wick. Jonathan Wick. Mr. Jonathan Wick. So, I'm sorry. By some... Jonathan's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> by some providence, Yang survives the Panzer onslaught and is once again captured. Uh, the SS soldiers can't communicate with Yang because of, you know, since when did Language Nazis barriers, know yeah. Japanese? We didn't have emojis uh, back then. Yeah. We didn't have <laughs> So, the SS put two and two together and assumed Yang is a member of the Japanese Imperial Army and was captured and pitted against them, the Wehrmacht, via Soviet, you know, machinations, I'll say. It's a lucky day. But in lieu of releasing Yang, they imprisoned him for turning his coat on, you know, via Ooh. joining, in air quotes, the Red Army. Never mind. So it's like, ah, oh, we understand where you came from, but you were doing combat things against us. You don't get off free. He was set up, okay? <laughs> Absolutely. Keep in mind, he was conscripted into the Imperial Army. He's not even Japanese. He's Korean. So he's just like, who? Who do I point the gun to that barely works? Is this, well, is this Gangnam Style? Is this the birth of place of Gangnam Style? No, no. It's loosely about? based. Loosely yeah. based loosely on his based. life. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that's, that's, the, that's the key that... That's the key terminology that deflects the lawsuits. <laughs> Jesus. So SS, the SS just lumped Yang in with the other Soviet POWs. He's like, this guy is weird and different. Just put him with the others, whatever. He's over there now. He's great. He's not making any trouble. Um, and Yang with these, o these other Soviet POWs were forced into duty operating under the Ost Battalion, a.k.a. the Wehrmacht's Eastern Legion. Yang was sent to provide support to the Nazis occupying France. So here's Yang, a fucking Korean, in Paris, in Nazi uniform, just thinking to himself, life is strange, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Holy shit. Yeah, I mean, go. that's a long distance to travel, right? You know? You've yeah, gotta man. you got to go through the Gobi Desert and Mongols. I mean, most people die within 20 miles of where they were born. This guy is, is uh, basically on the opposite end of the planet, by accident. Inspiring. Going He's while the, the most while the whole planet combatant. is shooting at him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The world's on fire and somehow he goes further than most anybody at yeah. that time. Further than he me. Like, yeah. I'll be your cannon fodder, but they captured me instead. So I just walked into their jail and they didn't open fire on me. He's like He's like a, a Mr. Magoo of sorts, just going through all sorts yeah. of situations, getting fired at, and with with his eyes barely open, just going from one to the end of the planet <laughs> to another. Oh, Jesus Christ. And oh, the oh, thing oh, is, oh, hello, oh, Madame oh, Moussel, oh, oh, I am Korean. The thing yeah. is, I want to deflect from Tom's racism there, but the <laughs> thing is... Good that was a good one. That was a good one. Most, Come on. It was good. I'll give you that. It was good. <laughs> I'll give you a 4.8 for that one. Um, oh, yeah. The thing is, 1944, <laughs> not politically correct, not the most understanding, but we have the Red Army and the Wehrmacht just being like, yeah, we don't need to kill the Asian guy right now. I feel like that's an incredible amount of fortune already bestowed upon oh, yeah. our boy Yang. You're it's absolutely like, right. That's crazy to think about. <laughs> what, you know that movie Saving Private Ryan? Yeah. And, like, it's the D-Day scene, and then you have two guys, like, seemingly surrendering to the Allied forces. They're, like, they're speaking, their hands are up, they're speaking, like, a, a foreign tongue. 
and uh, like our two protagonists just waste the two guys who are trying to like surrender, assuming they're Nazis. Yeah. But like if you you know if you if you you know look up the trivia, they're not speaking German. They're speaking like yeah. Belgium or something. Oh, and they're really? saying, "Please don't kill me. I was I'm being bullied to fight you." Yeah, and the, the the Allied soldiers just waste them because they don't have time to understand Brilliant. what they're saying. This is what he has not died from at this point. <laughs> Amazing, <laughs> and you know these are mean? the bad guys too. Like these the are Soviets not the and Allied the Nazis forces. are the types well, the that you would assume are just going to yeah. waste whoever's surrendering, <laughs> right? <laughs> so. Uh, Early 1944, the SS eggheads think the United States military might be fucking up to something. Maybe off the coast of Normandy, they might be doing something, and they might be making moves, we don't know. But, uh, Yang, get over there and uh, provide support in case the Americans do anything fucking uppity in northern France. <laughs> I, hear Norman, get- I hear Normandy is a great place to do some nude beach lounging. Yeah, that's probably yeah. why they all sent over there. It's like, hey, guess what? Um, I want to take my balls out at the beach. Can't do that in public. Well, can't do that in America. Yeah. If I had any say in it, like, hey, you're going to go to Europe and die now. Um, would you rather go to a beach with families or a beach with titties? titties. Yeah, but that's the common misconception about nude beaches, right? Like, it's not actually titties. It's uh, it's people that look like me and Travis. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that well, might be- I'm just saying, you know, well. That might be true, but you know you're also dying, and it's a it's a flesh lottery per se. You know, that's, like that's fair. I might I like see that. I might see one flesh tit. lottery. Yeah, yeah, I see one tit. At least. I might see one tit. It might be a guy's tit, but I'm so far away, It'd and be I'm mine. about to die. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought flesh lottery was the storming of Normandy. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, well, let's get back to the flesh lottery. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so we got this Korean guy showing up to fucking Normandy. <laughs> exactly, Travis. Uh, so, early 1944, it goes down. N- uh, D-Day, low tide. Americans take the beach at Normandy. I can't remember the name, but it's this weird thing where only Americans call that Operation D-Day. Like, all the other allies call it, like, Operation Saturn or something like that. Uh, which, uh, which, Overlord. Which makes... Overlord, thank you. I thought, it was, I thought the, all the rest of them called it, like, Operation Every Other Saturday. <laughs> well, it, it <laughs> stems the from... Show up. Flack. There's uh, the the confusion is for other countries is that there's like a thousand D days throughout World War II. Mm. Anytime there was any kind of operation or um, landing or anything, the first day of that operation was called D Day. <laughs> oh, oh, I like I th- that. I think a lot of Americans. I think it's our uh, education system. We th- they think that America like showed up and they're like, all right, we won. <laughs> this is the grade up. we got. <laughs> this is the one. America shows up and freedom spreads around. It's like, no, nah, dude, these guys were fucking fighting for a long time, and uh, that Red Base Army was. did a hell of a job. They did most of the heavy lifting. So, June 1944, D-Day, low tide. Americans storm the beach, bopping snoots, uh, Nazi snoots, as they push inland. Lieutenant Paratrooper Robert Brewer of the 101st Airborne Division infiltrates Normandy via plane instead of boat. So he's like, I'm going to fly over and... Stab some Nazis in the back while they're distracted with the beach fuckery. Okay. Smart. So, it is smart, and he does it. And uh, interesting fact I learned about the Normandy storming. Uh, fun trivia. The actor who played Scotty from Star Trek is on the beach. Uh, he took four bullets in his leg, one bullet in the middle of his finger, shooting it off. And he took a six bullet directly to his chest, which was stopped by a silver cigarette case kept Sheesh. in his breast pocket. Dang. So, Scotty from Star Trek has got, uh, might have some uh, kills under his belt. He's been through some shit. Damn. Well, he's definitely fucked up that whole, uh, you know, that warp system a few times. Definitely killed uh, a the few teleporters. Of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why the fuck can't he get the teleporters right? That seems like the easiest thing to do, not the warp, not the faster than light warp travel. I don't know, dude. I don't speak on behalf of Scottish people like ever. You know, that's just what it <laughs> that's, is. That, that's just respectful. Yeah. <laughs> So all this commotion and Star Trek engineer shooting gives Lieutenant Brewer a perfect opportunity to pull a sneaky. Brewer drops in, encounters almost no enemy resistance, and captures a room of what he calls Asians in German <laughs> uniform. Oh, that's so that's pretty how cool. confusing the site is for like an American. It's just like Asian people. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to call them Asians. I'm not going to call them Nazis. I caught a bunch of Asians wearing Nazi stuff because he just can't put it together. 
that, <laughs> you know, Nazi soldiers can be Asian. I still don't understand it. It's fine. Right. I mean, you're making fun yeah. of this guy, and it's like, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. and also, this is a time before hentai, where, like, now, if you saw that, you'd be like, okay, I understand. It. I mean, it's cause a weird Japanese hentai. I understand now. I know exactly what I'm looking at. If anybody in if, of all the combatants of World War II, I think that the, the uh, Nazis would be the ones to be into hentai. Oh yeah, hmm. German, uh, uh, Hitler with like his fucking shit. Cthulhu tentacle porn. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Robert Brewer was only twenty five percent correct, as he had arrested one Asian and three guys from Turkestan. <laughs> that's that's how little like national identities are being respected these days. He's like, I caught a bunch of Chinaman Nazis. <laughs> I was just like, no, they're three Turks and a fucking Korean guy. You know what I mean? So the U.S. military sees Yang and is just like, you're 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 a pinch hitter from the Imperial Army, aren't you? To some degree, that's correct. In the most roundabout way possible. In the most <laughs> yeah. convoluted matter, yes. Uh, so Yang was captured and shipped to Britain where he like went into like a prisoner camp. This isn't a death camp. This isn't Again? a fucking forced labor camp. This is, uh, we Just don't know prison? what to do with you. So you hang out with other weirdos like okay. you we in camp. We have one job for you and it's the boil eggs Ugh. for the troops. Yang is yeah, like, I was in a gulag. Yeah. Yang was in a gulag. So he's like, I'll boil all your eggs. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you mean boiling eggs and peeling potatoes for Uncle Sam, sir. I'm okay with this. Yes, please. Jeez. Fuck, I'll make the eggs, like, with my ass. I will sh- I will make section. <laughs> So, Yang was shipped to a prison in Britain because the Allies just assumed he was Japanese. However, with the help of the translator, Yang was able to explain his barely believable intercontinental <laughs> stories of woe. Just like, guys, I'm a Korean. And the Britons were just like, wow, oh, fuck. Sucks for you, man. How so did you get here? That not That's a very like strange Japanese. area of China you're from. Yes. I haven't <laughs> heard that neighborhood of China. Where is your uh, library of K-pop? I would like to hear. Mm. <laughs> uh, the Allies still didn't like that they caught Yang in Nazi garb. It's just like, well, we fought Nazis and you were wearing the kick me, I'm a Nazi sign on your back. We can't I mean, really. We, we found a few British royals wearing the same thing no. in recent oh. times. Well, I guess those are fine because they're white. Yeah, we have to accept them. It's fine. They just so, made mistakes. They didn't really mean to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so finally here is where the Americans break this cycle. They're just like, this dude has seen enough. Let's, let's just hold on to him. Let's not make him fight us or fight with us. This guy's seen enough. Let's just is put he him in kicking the ass or in battle? Is, is he like, or just like hiding or some shit? He's oh. the most bullied guy. Like, he He's gets shown in the back to charge. He gets told to charge that fortress, and when he gets to the fortress, he was just like, I didn't think this out uh. past this <laughs> point. Are you going to kill me? And all the fortresses are just like, nah. So he's just like, oh, okay, I guess I'll keep living. Your kimchi is in another castle. <laughs> he's like Mr. Bean, but yes, more like yeah. Mr. Soybean. Or <laughs> there you go. Something like that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> So, the U.S. military gives Yang his freedom in 1947. He's a prisoner of war. The war ends. You can't be a prisoner of war during peace. So, they're just like, all right, you get out, you weird Korean, whatever. And seeing as how the Americans did not force Yang to fight against anyone, Yang thought America was a pretty nifty place. Like, hey, hey you guys are all right. Can I be an American? And, you know, America, back in the day, was just like, oh, yeah, sure, man. You're American now. Huzzah! So Yang gets his citizenship almost immediately after he's freed. Yeah. After they built a wall around him. Yeah. They let he him out a of wall. the wall. <laughs> yeah. They, they fucking telltale hearted him and then put a doorknob in so they could let him out and be American. <laughs> mm. uh, so Where in America? Yang, Illinois. Illinois, Mike. Oh, no, Yang nice spot. settles in Illinois. He thinks that's a great place, and he even uh, bangs out a few kids. Hey, good for him. <laughs> there bounced go. back from that terrible shit growing up. Damn. What was his? Who yeah. was his wife? How did he meet someone? Was there a Cheryl? Than, yeah, I don't know. I think Cheryl there, and Susie. Cheryl and Susie, two wives. Travis great. got it right on the first yeah. try. Miraculous. Big uh, names in Illinois. 
laying that pipe. Yang was that type of WW2 veteran that didn't like talking about his experience. Every side of this global conflict shot at him, captured him, and with the exception, with the exception of the Americas, forced him into deadly combat. And may I reiterate, he was in a gulag, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, some tough shit. Yeah. So, Cullen, how about you ask me the cause of death of this gentleman? Now, how did Mr. Yang, the wonderful Gulliver's travel of World War II, how did Mr. Yang die? The year is 1992. We were blessed with Aladdin, Home Alone 2, and Wayne's World. <laughs> Yang died quietly in his home, never seeing any of those movies, aged 72. How about Damn. that? There you have him. Wow. Rest in peace, Yang Kyung Jong, a Korean man conscripted by the Imperial Army, captured by the motherland to fight the fatherland, only to get captured by the American forces and then given a home in Illinois. <laughs> he has the obscure honor of fighting and being captured in all World War II fronts. That's the world tour. insane. He's literally like the protagonist of Johnny Cash's song, like, I've been everywhere, man. <laughs> Dude got That's around. The, yeah, the right. music video for that is just Yang, like, in a black and white screen, traveling across Russia on the Trans-Siberian Railroad there. You know it, my friend. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is just the picture you painted, but I just picture this guy just being oblivious the entire time. I'm like, going to send you... You said Mr. Magoo, like, he's just yeah. walking around, he's like... Uh, who's this? Where am I fighting? <laughs> I'm gonna send you the one picture that might be him, and you're gonna be like, that guy is so defeated. Like, I feel like he stopped at America because they had hot dogs or something. He, he stopped, stopped <laughs> at America because they didn't force him into fucking combat. And like, oh, this, hot this, dogs. This. Well, maybe that too. <laughs> well, so the, uh, the Kalkin goal battle there, and I'm gonna step in with my two cents from Cauldron, is, uh, is also fascinating on its own because that is the uh oh yes i've seen this picture that is look how defeated that the most is. defeated human being that's ever he's lived. just like God yeah i think it. that just he's adds to the enough. mr magoo look he's like all right yeah. I'm, I'm here okay yeah all right. like who are the americans gonna make me fight now <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what this is by the way that may or may not be yang but th that's a what the americans called a young japanese guy with they later figured out he was korean being uh, processed at capture. That is a German outfit. There is a actual German behind him in Wehrmacht garb, and in the foreground you have what I presume is some kind of commanding officer mm -hmm. uh, taking inventory of the prisoners captured. He's got the face just, of a middle-class Long Island wife. He's <laughs> just <laughs> defeated. His shoulders are rolled forward. He's just like... I don't blame him. Yeah. This guy is not going to understand what I'm saying, so I'm just going to sit here and keep quiet, motherfucker. Honey, you want to add a dormer to the house? Okay, fine. <laughs> sure. Um, there, um, is some, there, there is some slight speculation that this is not Yang. Uh, Korea goes on the record to say the guy named Yang Kyo Jong uh, didn't exist, uh, but they do reveal that there were Koreans fighting for the Nazis by some roundabout experience. Hmm. Uh, the Korea also says because Yang Kyo Jong didn't like talking about his experience while he was in Illinois, uh, also like gave credence to the fact that it might not have happened. He just kept, he just kept tight lipped to avoid um, stories crossing. But it, it's strange because they're like people like him existed, but he didn't exist. It's just like well, 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 yeah, you know, like they like if you're keeping records of foreign prisoners you captured you're not gonna ask the guy for his full name and address the record keeping isn't gonna be there you know but, what i mean but cody when, also like, something the to Soviets consider capture an asian something to consider is that this path was so strange that did he even know what actually happened <laughs> yeah it's just no, like that's i'm smiling and firing at who they tell me to yeah and it <laughs> yeah. sounds like a joke but also if i was abducted by three different Mil military forces that I didn't speak the native language of, I uh -huh. would have no idea what the fuck was going on. You yeah. just kind of go along with it, nodding, yeah. right? I exactly. think there's been a Russian man that lives in my bathroom for about three months now. I don't know what he wants. <laughs> he just <laughs> yells at me when I poop. And he doesn't even know what he wants at this point either. And also, <laughs> just before we move on, uh, I just wanted to get back into that battle, Cullen, because we, yeah. we got cut off. Oh, sorry, yes, finish your thoughts. Oh, uh, so Cal can go. Interesting thing for two reasons. You have... Um, First off, this is where Gorky Zhukov, the the 
like the most he's basically the 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 Russian version of Patton. He's the most celebrated mm. Russian general of the war. Um he ends up being the only undefeated general in the war. Um and he kind of makes his name at Kalkingol, mm-hmm. which is, you know, you question alternate history. Like, if if Gorky Zhukov dies at uh, Kalkingol, then Stalingrad is probably won by the Nazis. Um, oh. The Battle of Moscow is probably won by the Nazis. He's the guy who set up the defenses at Moscow. He set up the Battle of uh, Uranus on Stalingrad to, to free Stalingrad and encircle uh, Paulus. And then the other thing to keep in mind, this is the, the one that I really think is, is interesting here, is at Kalkingol, the Japanese are so uh, whipped by the Russians and so um, beaten that they keep a million men, a million Japanese soldiers are on the border with Russia throughout the entirety of World War II. Damn. And if that hadn't been the case, that million man force could have been on any number of islands in any number of battles throughout the it's Pacific. A wild card. Oh wow! They were just holding onto card. a wild card that they and never and they used. never pulled those guys off of that border because they were so afraid of the Russians coming, uh, backdooring them at some point. Well, that Damn. was their that was their huge fear, right? I mean, the whole yeah. entire time because like before World War Two. The Japanese just like went into China and they were like, lol, this is ours now. <laughs> <laughs> In the simplest sense. <laughs> Rawr. Rawr. But like, and then they were like, Russia, you guys better not chill out here because we like doing this. And then they started showing up and they're like, oh, damn. But I didn't know what a million soldiers yeah, no, were just yeah, chilling. Crazy. A million soldiers and anywhere from a, a quarter to a third of the um, armored units motorized units in the imperial army were on that border the entire time that world war ii went on so they think you know you've got battles like guadalcanal um that could have drastically changed the outcome of the pacific war had the japanese had more men available uh one of the biggest problems at guadalcanal is that the japanese weren't able to keep reinforcing with enough men um, and, you know, a lot of those island battles, tanks and, and motorized vehicle, you know, w- uh, units aren't going to be able to do a whole hell of a lot. But there are situations where if, if some of these Japanese defenses had a couple more tanks, um, it's less likely. Now, obviously, I, I don't think that the United States or the Allied forces are going to lose in the Pacific. Eventually, just the sheer weight of. Uh, I think they of, win. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the sheer weight of material power at some point would have turned it no matter what. But um, it would have been interesting had the Japanese had the ability to pull those uh, those massive forces and throw them in in a couple of different places. My favorite thing about looking, you, you mentioned Japanese armored vehicles and like guns mounted on Japanese armored yeah. vehicles. One of my like most mind fucky things that I like realized while going through like archival pictures is those tools of destruction aka Japanese armored vehicles are from brands we buy today. Like oh, I'm yeah. look oh, I'm yeah. looking at an anti-aircraft <laughs> Toyota. I'm oh, not yeah. fucking joking. <laughs> well, like, that's a Toyota the... that is used to shoot down airplanes. The, same thing the, with the Germans, the, too. The Zero yeah, plane. The, the infamous Zero plane is a Mitsubishi. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Japanese Zeros are made from Mitsubishi. Also, wow. I think what's funny about looking at some of those armored vehicles in Japan is they are Japanese size. Because I myself cannot fit into, like, <laughs> smaller oh. Hondas. <laughs> but if you look at some of these tanks and stuff they're using, they are very minuscule. They yeah, made a scale. <laughs> they were wanted... called tankettes, actually. Yeah, tankettes, yeah, they were. right? <laughs> right, yeah. Definitely not even a little racist or anything. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, maybe you know, they got to build their cars That's my shtick, okay? Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Thank you, Cody. Bam! Ooh, uh, Cullen. Yeah, that was, a, so that we was got, awesome. We got Very the, interesting. Yeah, this, we got this guy that was, I guess he's the bad, right? Uh, no, do you sure. want to go the good or do we want to go the war criminal? Um, let's go Let's go the war criminal. Oh! All right. So that would be me. There you go. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you, first off, um, doing research on this guy probably pinged my IP with Homeland Security. I don't uh, think that's the first time. 
You Dude, you gotta you use ExpressVPN. Well. Go to uh, roastmortemcast.com. No, I'm just practicing my reads when we get them, you know what I'm saying? I'm just having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have we'll a lot of We'll send them fan. this clip. Yeah, yeah we they're going to love have a lot it. Of- my half-ass read like that? I'm not going to finish the read. It's not free we- commercials. All right, Travis, <laughs> tell me about war and criminals and who so did we- it. Yeah, we have a lot of fans that are like, you guys should totally roast a Nazi. Oh. And we've kind of not done that. I mean, we did Coco Chanel, who was like Nazi S affiliated. Yeah. We did, a, we did a Nazi double agent. We did a Nazi double agent. But uh, you guys know who the SS is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the super specials. I yeah, am familiar, but why don't you tell us just uh, for anybody out there that isn't familiar? Well, basically, get a beer. they are the guys in World War II with the skulls on their caps that thought they were the good guys. Like, guess what, dude? I got skulls in my hat. Uh, that means I'm good, right? <laughs> 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 no, but the, the, the SS was supposed to be the Nazi super soldier. It was the elite, the elite, the best of the best of the German army, the best they had to oh, offer. Oh, meth heads? Uh, but oh, Gillette, a mess, the best a man can get. Yes, but the guy that we're going to roast tonight <laughs> with this dude yeah. kind of blows a hole wide open in the whole Nazi. Could, you know what? Guess what? Nazis lie a lot. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. No. But, I, um, I, I don't follow, but don't wait for me. Keep going. <laughs> so we're roasti- roasting a guy called Oscar Derlwanger, who is I, com- complete human garbage. And I just want to give a disclaimer here because, like, I'm going to try to stay light with this shit. But if you listen to the Marquis Decide episode and, like, that trigger warning, <laughs> there's a trigger warning on this guy for sure. Sick. Nice. Yeah, so, so listen to this on the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Don't let your mom hear it. So, Dovanger was born in, and I'm going to fuck up all this German. Dovanger was born in Würzburg, Bavaria, in 1895. And around the year 1913, when he was 17, he enlisted in the Prussian army and fought in World War I, serving in the Koenig Karl Grenadiers Regiment 123. I don't know what that means. Maybe Cullen- That was a password to your router. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, no! They already know my IP, dude. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he's serving on the Western Front. He's injured. He's wounded. Uh, six times during the war and is awarded the Iron Cross second class and the Iron Cross first class. Ooh. So, I mean, he did his time. I mm-hmm. feel like World War I is a little bit less like, um, like it's loaded in World War II, right? Like, uh, uh, uh the Nazis are bad. In World War I, it's like oh. the Germans are doing something. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a, a lot less weight behind, you know, German soldier in World War One is, you know, not necessarily an evil guy. If you yeah. say German soldier in World War Two, even if he's not a SS, it's like, eh, 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 still affiliated. Eh. Yeah. You, you probably read like uh, that guy probably read the German comics that were like, mm, uh, <laughs> we are the master race. <laughs> well, you, you know, the whole thing with like. You know, World War One was fought, and no country, like, you know, we're far enough away where we can go, okay, there's disputes happening here, and then people went to war. Fair enough. And then afterwards, all the debt being pinned on Germany, and then them taking it out on Jews and Polish people and gypsies and getting their wealth through those means, it's like, all right, you got wronged, but then you doubled down. You became the bad yeah. guy. There's no good. There, there was nothing good about that that unit. So, if you're a villain, embrace it. Yeah, exactly. They went full villain. So here we are. Full villain. We need more villains to kill. Right. That's a That's very simple layman's heroes. way of of looking at it, without uh, you know calling anyone out specifically. <laughs> or, or who's his name? Who? Abraham's boyfriend. Abraham's <laughs> boyfriend. <laughs> Right, so by the end of the war, our guy Dovanger, he becomes a lieutenant, and he's actually serving on the Eastern Front in Romania. And during the armistice, he was ordered to intern all of his soldiers in Romania. I don't know. They're like, guess what? It's over, but you're going to be prisoners. And he's like, no, nah, <laughs> fuck that. So he leads like 600 Germans back to Germany. Romanian but interns. What, yeah. He didn't want to become a Romanian intern. 
Okay. Along the way, they ran past a Korean guy who was on a train headed for France. Just trying to explain (laughs) something desperately. He got locked in the bathroom, and he was on the outside trying to climb his way back into the main caboose. It was crazy. So now we all know the horrors of World War I, and it broke many a man on both sides. I've heard, heard, seen, I've listened to you, Colin, talk about a few episodes on just the horrors of life in the trenches and the psychological fuckery that went on. Um, it, you know, show's uh, crazy. people came out of the war with PTSD, but they yes. didn't know what it was. Yeah. Um, Grow up. So that's what loud they said. Grow up. Stop complaining. <laughs> so Daryl Langer, I feel like is much of the same thing. He had PTSD, but I think his PTSD went. It went beyond that. This guy was just evil. He's a fucking evil dude. <laughs> okay. God, well, I, don't know why I, I don't shit. know why you'd laugh at after you said something like that. But, I mean, um, sometimes when you talk about not Nazis and SS, you get like a nervous little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you think about the clowns that live under your bed. I still right. check. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, the 32 years old, feet. I check. Right. Those clowns get, might be Nazis. Yeah. You got a cold spoon up the anus. You got to. <laughs> I'm just taking the temperature. <laughs> During the interwar period, Delvanger uh, became a grade A fuck up criminal. He was a raging alcoholic. He was hooked on all of the drugs in Berlin, which was very wild at the time. Woo! And he would break into violent outbursts. Just, you know, I'm gonna punch you in the face. I don't like you. I'm gonna stab you. That's very oh, uh, a nice person, Take your sounds money. like. Yeah, sounds right. like he's from Long Island. Yeah, it sounds like some fucking <laughs> oh! South Shore fucking... Well, New England shade up there. <laughs> well, I mean, he's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah you're not wrong. <laughs> I can't really Back say. Stated. I can be like, ah, oh, God. Violent outburst, that sounds like us. Does yeah, it not? Be offended with facts. Sounds like Bagel Boss. Yeah, right? <laughs> I hope... <laughs> I hope he's doing all right. All right. Never happened to that guy. He had a stroke. Oh, really? Yeah, he had a oh. stroke, Bagel Boss. Shout out to him. Long Island Thoughts history. Prayer. <laughs> <Unseen> <laughs> <peas>. Yeah, <laughs> he was driving down Nathan Hale Drive. He's going to Nathan's. Yeah, he was going Nathan's on Nathan Hale, and he was like, "Bang, stroke." Women did it. Wow. I don't know. Shit. I wasn't there. I read an article. Continue. Uh, <laughs> so our guy Oscar, he starts to get involved in these like strange proto-Nazi nationalist paramilitary groups. Um, and it, they started out fighting communists in uh, Germany. There was the whole German Revolution, which I had never heard of, that happened in 1918 and 1919. And the Freed Corps were the part that he was he was a, a part of. Just like I don't know, we can't let the communists win, so I'm gonna be German about it. I'm gonna be German about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did I say that right, Colin? Or uh... yeah, yep. I mean, it's uh, yeah. I don't know if it would pass any exams, but it's it's a good rough outline. <laughs> That's what this show is. That's a you know we 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 give out our own credentials. You pass our class, but uh, it's all day. rough outlines. Well, one of my uh, actually one of my. I did not study for a certain semester in college because I did a lot of drinking. And uh, I had to write a uh, a paper on Iron Age Britain. And I just wrote, because I ran out of time, and I was like, I just wrote, they used iron. Yeah, I, dude. <laughs> what'd you I get did on not, it? I did not pass that. <laughs> well, was it wrong? I mean, factually, it seems correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did I it. Like it's a very vague answer, though, Travis. Well, I'll just say it, dude. I feel like it made sense. Mike, so anyway, this fuckwit, so this fuckwit gets his doctorate in political science uh, in 1922. I don't know. Poli sci. Somehow he does that. And a year later, he joins the Nazi party and the SA, which is kind of like the uh, precursor to the SS, you know, before it formed. Oh. There's a whole little, the night of the long knives that happened and they consolidated power. But that's a whole Ooh. nother thing I don't want to get into. <laughs> uh, Dur- Durwanger, he worked for a Jewish textile company at the time and was continually being arrested for embezzlement and the oh. possession of illegal firearms. He's like, you know, not a nice man. No. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know. We shouldn't get into that because it's not America. You know, like, you know, if it was America, it'd be fine to have firearms, you know. 
Well, Must be annoying for the cop, though, to continuously arrest someone for embezzlement. <laughs> right. How many times until you're like, come on, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, right. uh, we're just here on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, oh, these are Germans we're dealing with, Cullen, and they, they hit their breaking point at some point. So in 1940, or in 1934, Durlwanger got really fucked up and did a whole bunch of drugs. And he raped a 14-year-old, Ew. then decided to get into a armored car, military armored car, and crash it. Um, Durlwanger was arrested, stripped of his doctorate and his rank in the SA, and convicted to two years in prison. So he's a Kennedy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, boy. A little high heat there. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> that's good, Cody. Oh, was- yeah. <laughs> We got a little Epstein type here. A little German Epstein. Okay. Understood. German Epstein. That sounds like a name. Like <laughs> a good well. porn star name. Oh, oh yeah. God. Well, I don't want to know what kind of porn that is. I'm not saying you're Mike, wrong. That's I'm your just new stage saying. name. German Epstein. <laughs> <That's so bad. laughs> Make it work. Yeah. I just love how that was Cody and I's orthodontist name, Dr. Epstein. Yeah. Oh, really? You had him? Yes, we both had the same orthodontist. <laughs> there was an Epstein in my mouth. <laughs> You're on Kid Island and your teeth done? <laughs> yeah. You have to fill that up. You've been eating too much candy. Where do you buy this candy? I'm trying to find some candy. Um, oh, I'd go for some candy right now. Yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, Let's go. Continue. Whole purchase candy? Wholesale candy? Mm-hmm. So Oscar was released... Um, and then immediately arrested again for doing something. Uh, the history doesn't record what he got arrested for. Probably more f- illegal firearms or raping or so he's a, I don't know. He's a Kennedy. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> but this time there was no prison involved. Where the Nazis had kind of taken control by then, and he was sent off to a concentration camp. Okay. I don't know if you can feel bad for this guy for going to a concentration camp because he's no. a child molester and. I don't know. Oh, right. I feel nothing. Well, yeah, it's not exactly the issue with the camp. It's how, who was sent there. Un- like, you know, there's lots of people that should be in a concentration camp. Uh, 12 million Jews and mixed gypsies and stuff like that. That's the, That was the wrong population. It was the wrong demographic to be sent there. Maybe criminals would have been error. a good place to start. <laughs> Somebody really screwed up. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. <laughs> this is... This isn't up. right. This can't be right. There's a lot of people coming in here. This right? handwriting sucks. <laughs> I thought we were <laughs> calling the Jews. I don't. It, it's kind of like back in the day when you used to have a party on Facebook and you'd send out private invites and then somebody made it public. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, it fucking sucked. And everyone would show up to your house. <laughs> and they would. You Where's know, this train coming from, guys? Uh, fuck! I don't have enough gas for all these people. I only, I only invited twelve of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Durlwanger had some friends in high places, specifically a guy named Gottlieb Berger. What a name. Um, yeah. yeah, he was friends with the SS chief, Heinrich Himmler. Oh, he, the big boy. Yeah, oh, he's the big boy. Yeah, he's so, this guy Berger is able to pull some strings, and Durlwanger was released from the concentration camp and reinstated into the SS and went off to go fight in none other than the Spanish Civil War. Ooh. You guys seen that picture that Picasso did of, like, fucked up cows and people's heads getting all stretched out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Guernica. Yes. Mm. Uh, this dude was part of the German Condor Legion that fought at that battle and committed all the atrocities. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, got, a, a he's nice got, like, a record name. going on, you know? He's trying to be the best at being the worst. Yes. And when, and when, you're, when your leader's Hitler, you know, you just got to keep up in it. You <laughs> yeah. got to you know, do him. <laughs> Man. Even Bron's boyfriend? My goodness. It's like some unnamed NBA star looking at Kobe Bryant. Just like, I'm this guy, and he's there. In the helicopter. That's, Second string. I just use that analogy because I'm the sports correspondent of the show. I couldn't think of a bad <laughs> basketball player. I could tell um, how well thought out that was. Second string Nazi. I only know ones who have their own shoe model. Uh, let's continue the episode. Oh, I love Sam Adidas. So Oscar was, uh, he was uh, wounded three times over the course of the Spanish Civil War. This guy likes to get shot. Gets shot no, he a does. Lot. No one, no, oh. you can't say that. <laughs> 
I, I don't know. Well, I have to get so shot. Now, just, everyone's like, hey, yeah. duck for cover. He's like, is this, is this enough? Wait, it's going to hit me in my ass. <laughs> he's hanging his got, ass out of the trench. He's got his ass out there, pants yeah. down, pre-lubed. He's like, ah. I hope you don't hit it. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> My name is Oscar, and this is Nazi Germany. Now, 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 put the jackass theme in. It's uh, Corona by the Minutemen. Great song. Continue. So now, of course, World War II happens. The war that we're talking about. Now this what? child molester, drunken jug <laughs> drug addict, joins, or he volunteers for the Waffen-SS. What's that? Uh, you know, it's a, a, it's a weird subsection of the SS because in this particular case, uh, he, since he was a criminal, Himmler set up an official, a brigade called the Durlwanger Brigade, which was run by the SS, but not, it wasn't part of the SS. They're like, we don't like you guys. It was made up entirely of criminals, by the way. It's, kept it's a like, dummy separate. corporation. It's the military equivalent of a dummy corporation. Right. Yeah. Like, the SS is supposed to be, like, the best of the best Germans, but they're so, bringing criminals into it. The Waffen, though, is just, um, the uh, Waffen F SS just denotes the military branch of the SS. Mm. So it's Thank just you, the Colin. units that are going to actually fight on the front line. Thank you, Colin. I didn't put that in there because you know, SS. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I mean, it's all it's all bad. They're all shit. So you know, it doesn't really make a difference. But the Waffen part just denotes that they're actually fighting combat units. Well, thank you. Because uh, well, the, anyway, the so they're, they're fighting SS. combat. We need the yeah. we need the real sick minds to stay safe. You know, the kind of guys who need to be piercing a part of their body in order to orgasm. They need to be behind <laughs> the curtain here. <laughs> I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel like also a lot of people just associate the SS with secret police and don't realize that they were actually like uh, combat units as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's the Gestapo then? That's that's like, the secret police. That's the secret okay. police. Thank you. Yeah, which like I feel like people just kind of mix between SS Gestapo. I and, am like, one of those people. Right. So the, the the easiest way to think of it is the SS is the guy with the, like you were saying, the skull on his hat, but he's in a military uniform. The Gestapo is the guy like uh, Indiana Jones and the uh, the Ark, where he's got like the black leather duster, the fedora, and the little glasses. The German men in black. Okay. Exactly. The ones mm. that melt. Yes, the face melted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the ones that know about all the aliens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you shut the fuck up. So, as I mentioned, Himmler was not too happy about, um, like, there's this unit that's formed, the Durlwanger Brigade. And he's not too happy that they are technically, like, part of the SS, because this Durlwanger Brigade is consists of entirely of criminals. At the be, start of it... Be honest, was Himmler ever actually happy? No. The man had no soul. <laughs> yeah, but he was a hell of a chicken farmer. Was he? He was handy with the uh, cock? He was very handy with the car. <laughs> yeah, that's what he got. He started off and he got his um, degree in poultry farming. Oh, wow. They give degrees for that? <laughs> what have I been doing with my life? This podcast is over. Could you imagine, like, Himmler just looking at a chicken going, oh, this one is ready to pop, and putting it on his mouth and sucking an egg out? <laughs> Like, he does, you know, he does have a, a, there is a very similar look between him and the Purdue guy. <laughs> oh. Arian. <laughs> that look is called oh. Arian. Oh, God. Uh -oh. But it's a little Spiracy? extra. It's a little extra. Yeah. A little, a little extra. So the, the Sturlwanger Brigade, all petty criminals, mainly consisting of poachers. So the Nazis had this, um, it had a German fighting unit called the Jägermeisters. You've heard about yeah, that? Yeah, baby. So the Jaegers, the Jaegers were like the Jaegers were hunters. That's all that Jaegermeister means. They're a hunter and hunter it, it, probably. It had a, it had a some type of Jaeger unit had been in the German army for a long time, and the whole idea of this Delvanger Brigade was that they would take all the poachers and they'd act like these weird forest predator, like in more than one ways because this guy is a child molester, um, predator units. <laughs> okay, Jaeger. Yeah. But again, also, 
just want to point out the hypocrisy of the Nazis where it's like the SS are the finest officers. And you're like, okay, we're bringing criminals to be our finest soldiers. I, I, I really don't think you need to even bring in the hypocrisy for somewhat of like, let's say, a, cr a light criticism of the Nazis to take place <laughs> in like the common dialogue. I don't think wow. yeah, we need to point out those hi hippocratic things they did. You want violent people. Right. So they were yeah. so much of a disgrace that they were not able to have the SS on their, like, the logo, you know, the fucking... Oh, they weren't fucking... cool enough? Oh, they didn't get their lettermans with the skull on the front, did they? Yeah. They, they did not the get butter. their lettermans. They, so they adopted the crossed potato masher grenades on their uniform. Oh, that's cool. That's cool as shit, that's actually. Cool as shit, actually. Yeah, yeah, I like don't that say, better. Don't say that, Cody, because that... The sign is used still today, which we will talk about at the end. It's very cool. Oh. Yeah, we we we've seen some recently at our state's capital, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so Zwick, instead of saving me, put echo on that statement. Yeah, so I, so I can feel it. So I can really feel it when it hits home later. There's nothing to care about anymore. So why not just talk about history? Here Welcome we are. Welcome to 2021. Mm-hmm. So here we go. All right, the atrocities with this guy really begin. Um, in fact, this guy was so sadistic that multiple high-ranking Nazi officers requested his re removal for his harsh and perverse tactics. Sheesh. Some of them included oh. actual commanders of controlling extermination camps. Damn. So when a guy that controls an extermination camp is like, dude, fucking calm down. <laughs> like... <laughs> Lights hey, go off. Yes, yeah, right? like, you're showing art, dude. Like, yeah, right. It's like, dude, yeah. hang back. As like the fucking SS officers, like gassing sawing people. a limb off. <laughs> like, Calm down. What the fuck, bro? So what is he doing, Travis? What's fucked up shit is gonna, going on here? We're gonna talk about it. And this is the reason why we don't really roast Nazis that often, because it, it kind of gets hard to get funny with how bad this dude is. I'll it's, do it. It, it, yeah, it, I'll, I, I'll pie a, I'll, I'll pay, I'll pie a Nazi in the sh face. Shut up! It's too easy. It's just too easy, okay? <laughs> like it's, so, these it's nauseating and it's too easy at the same time. Ha! These take it. these complaints went so far up the chain of command that even hit, they were put before Hitler himself. Um, Who? Sheesh! Yeah, Ava Braun's boyfriend. Okay. Cody. Thank you. You know him. He was at that party that you went to. <laughs> Ava Braun's party. <laughs> Remember that party you went to? Great party. At the Capitol last week. You know, yeah, the, at the Capitol last week. That one German oh. leader who's best known for his uh, several years of just trying to get an erection. The guy, the, the visionary that created the Autobahn. Yeah, that guy. Oh, he liked pets. <laughs> yeah. He really liked Amy's vegan chili. Mm. This is getting ridiculous now. It's not. <laughs> we, we have too much... Of a blast on this show. Continue, Are you really going to give us flack uh, for taking shots at Hitler? You, <laughs> you, you sit down and think about your life if you have criticism on five guys taking shots at Hitler. Fuck you. So, of course, Oscar's first, uh, his first mission with his brigade was to be stationed at the labor camp Stary Diskow. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's Polish. Uh, it's one of those languages that. Starry Disco, oh. yes, yeah. Very Starry Disco. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Get yes. down at the club tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, this lasted until 1942, and over the years, SS Judge uh, George Conrad Morgan was like, please get this sicko out of here, accusing <laughs> him of wanton acts of murder, corruption, and racenschnad, which oh, is, is race defilement. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. So, whoa, he, was, whoa, so whoa. he was having sex with Jewish girls. Mm-hmm. Um, not just having sex with Jewish girls. This guy, well, first of all, he would go out to the surrounding villages on a drinking, raping, extorting rampage in the ghettos. Um, and when he was hard at work at the camp, uh, he would wrangle up female Jewish girls, inject them with rat poison, strip them, beat them, rape them, and watch them convulse to death, to death in front of them, him and his friends. That's a crazy Jesus. kink. Yes. So, oh, how do we make a joke here? <laughs> we can't, Cody. You don't. I was just, yeah. mm, okay. Cody. <laughs> there was no also joke. rumors that he used to cut up Jewish women, boil them with horse meat, and make soap out of them. Damn. 
You guys, hey, I'm not you guys, no, but no, our no, fans no. wanted me to do a Nazi. I said, all right, do I'm going to do the worst one that I fucking can. <laughs> if only they had TV. Hey, no half measures. <laughs> yeah. And Chuck Norris isn't a Nazi, okay? Yet. <laughs> Keep going. I think, I mean, I feel like his uh, roundhouses are as powerful as a panzer, though. <laughs> oh boy! Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. All right, now we're really stretching for anything. We didn't have to. In 1942, the Durlwanger Brigade moved uh, from this camp and was reassigned to hunt down and wrangle up partisans in Belarus. And now his preferred method of wrangling up said partisans was just taking an entire village, locking them in a barn, uh, locking the doors, and lighting it on fire. Anyone that escaped uh, the flames would be mowed down by machine gun. Sheesh. That's he would also use civilians as human shields and sending them out to clear minefields. Oh, and of that... course, he would release hungry, abused dogs on the villagers and would laugh while they tore them apart and gutted children in front of their parents. Real of course. cowardly bastard shit. Mm, German efficiency. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's what I came up with. It's estimated that Oscar's men killed 300,000 civilians in Belarus. Uh, and regardless of the complaints, Himmler, because like Nazis were like, I mean, these are Nazis we're dealing with. They're like, dude, this guy is crazy. Like, take him out of control. Like, you're right. Like, remove this dude. Send him back to the concentration camp. He might but get us in trouble. <laughs> the psychopaths have lodged a complaint. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's when you know. Regardless of all this, Himmler awarded him a German cross. So fancy. Yeah. So I don't know what's worse. Is it the commanders that are worse or is this guy worse? Because he's doing the shit and the commanders like Hitler and Himmler are like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, keep doing it. I think they're all I think they're all pretty, pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like we're, we're just talking about like, oh, Hitler gave him a prize. Like, who cares? Like, this is this is sick people we're talking about. Like, oh, I got a Nobel Peace Prize. Good for you. From it's Hitler. not even that. What's going <laughs> on? What are it's you like doing? It's like Hitler decided he's the employee it's, of the month. So, yeah, is that good? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus. Like, if you. Like, yeah, that's that's the age old question I'm posing now for eternity. If you got a Nobel Peace Prize from Hitler, would you be OK with it? It's like getting dog shit on your birthday. It's, it's a little bit more than getting dog shit on your birthday. I'll just throw it out there. It's not a lot of people get. Uh, no, I think, again, Mike has cut to the core of this issue. Uh, that is some insightful <laughs> shit right there. You don't think outside of the box, Does he do? Um, I so think it's I, Gordian uh, knot that is this question. Mike was <laughs> split it right in half. Mike says, think outside the box, think inside the bag. Of dog shit. <laughs> yeah. Gonna, I'm, so you know, I'm trying court, to get it the, to the human the level court. for our listeners. <laughs> Sorry. Fair enough. At the core of this uh, unit, this guy that Oscar was controlling, these were just cowardly, untrained criminals. And in fact, as the war progressed, the Nazis became more and more lenient with accepting men into this group. I remember at first it was just like poachers who, mm -hmm. I mean, we all know someone that's gone out hunting on someone else's land or something and they're like oh dude but at this point <laughs> the nazis were like all right anyone that's german in a concentration camp will put into your unit so this included like real deal murderers clinically insane people uh you know rapists and uh, the whole german? scum of the german empire that they put in right concentration well, camp. well after they got all the innocent people in they were like okay let's start getting rid of some of these baddies <laughs> oh, okay. No, that makes sense. Right, so those folks. So then the unit was actually deployed to fight the Red Army, and wouldn't you know it, these untrained assholes were mowed down in waves. What happened? <clears throat> they stood up. Oh, they were like, all right, now you got to actually be soldiers and not just, like, rape and murder. And they're like, oh. Is that different? Eaten in a while. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Now, let's talk about the worst event that I have ever encountered in pretty much my entire life of looking at history and i've never mm. the, the funny thing is i've never heard of it you know i feel like in Give school we learn about um the holocaust which is important to learn about but there's other atrocities atrocities that the nazis committed and this one is the walla massacre okay well that oh. i mean firstly you know you can't forget the holocaust 
No. But, but you can never forget 9-11. Are you saying there's something I should forget even less than those two things? Tom's at, Tom's at capacity with his fucking memory. I so we gotta like, start <laughs> deciding. We gotta get some more flash brain. discs yeah. in there, man. Yeah, pretend... Alright, I have to make some room. Full memory. <laughs> Let's go. Time to remember. So this whole brigade of criminally insane semi-SS... Uh, were deployed to the Warsaw Uprising in Poland. Um, this was the summer of 1944, and Durlanger and his unit turned the district of Walla onto, into an actual hell on earth. Within Ooh. two days, 40,000 civilians were tortured, raped, and murdered. Two days. <laughs> That's two days. obscene. No, uh, Durl Wanger himself ordered uh, three hospitals to be burned with patients inside, pulling Sheesh. the nurses outside who were whipped, gang raped, and hanged naked next to the doctors of said hospital. Oh. Um, and the most despicable part of this massacre, which is documented from another German soldier, German officer of, of a different brigade who just happened to witness this horror, and I have a, a quote here, which I'm terrible at doing. Forgive me, Colin. We know this on the show. <laughs> I cannot quote anything because I can't read. <laughs> Reading's hard, man. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> After the so, this is a quote from the officer. After the doors of the building were blown off, we saw a daycare full of small children, around five hundred, all with their small hands in the air. Even Durwanger's own people called him a butcher. He was he ordered to kill them all. Shots were fired. Mm. Uh, but he requested his men to save ammo and finish them with rifle butts and bayonets. Bla Sheesh. Blood, brain, blood and brain matter flowed in streams down the stairs. Mm. Mm. He's Beat killing the childlings. In. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for listening to Roast Mortem Cast. Uh, I know you, <laughs> you all have yeah. something better to do right now, like cry or... Yeah. Jeez, it's terrible. He's doing that, just like he's taking a gun and just beating a kid's head in with it. He'd be a bad person, I That's would say. Crazy. You know, top, <laughs> top notch uh, shitbag. Yeah. And Saint Peter, Saint, Saint Peter has an asterisk next to this guy's name. Let's just say. That. Oh yeah, and just to put it out there, another SS commander that noticed the massacre and witnessed this whole thing said that Durlwanger and his men were a herd of pigs that should be destroyed. <laughs> That nervous chuckle, uh, you know, just keeps popping in there. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know, right? Now, the, there's an even worse part to this story is that when the, the Warsaw Uprising goes into high gear, the Germans are in full retreat. The Soviets are pounding them on the Eastern Front. The Soviets stop outside of Warsaw. They're on the city. They're in the suburbs of the city. They're out just outside the city itself. And they knowing they know that this uprising is going on, and they halt their offensive uh, forces and let the Germans put the Warsaw uprising down, so that they don't have to deal with the Jews in the Warsaw ghetto when they take over the city. Oh, because well, they didn't want to have to deal with the medical and the, the logistical aspect of feeding all these mouths. So they let the Germans do exactly what they knew they were doing um, and just sat outside for three or four days and waited for it to all kind of dust to settle. And you wanted Travis to go second out of, out of all three of us. <laughs> Man, yeah. so those Russians and their logistics. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't speak the same language. I wouldn't know if they were hungry if he was asking. Well, At the end of the two-week mass, thank you for adding that, by the way. I did not know yes. that the Russians were just like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, cool. it's crazy. If you thought Russians were bad, uh, welcome to the show. We're having a great time here. <laughs> no, it's all Getting bad. It's all bad, to be fair. No, one, no, one, no, one's, uh, no one's got a clean slate. I mean, in we're the, talking uh, on, on the warfare. All, all is fair in, in love and war, which is a thing I've never really uh, understood because... Uh, Shit ain't fair. I mean, we're talking Especially war not on the Eastern Front. Yes. Nope. We're talking warfare here. I, I think, uh, and this is a little side note, but uh, I listened to your episode on the bombing of Dresden, and I just never, I think whenever I introduce people to your show, I'm like, check out the way he described this, because it was just, 
you know, there's a lot of fanfare and like glory to war, but like it's really an atrocity, even if they're not committing an atrocities, right? There's the human a- human aspect of it that's just ugh. I think you're I think you're spot on. Whenever we talk about stuff like this, always anchoring it with a story like you just talked about with the nursery. Because it's all like tanks and planes and that's cool. Um, but you know, a nursery got emptied and children's heads got smashed up against walls until their brains eked out. Yeah. Um, so something to kind of always anchor it is 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 the healthiest way to uh, talk about this kind of stuff. For sure. So uh, well, not that, funny, not no. particularly amusing. No, but. everyone drink. No, no. Yay! Everyone drink. <laughs> Forget about. <Hey>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, let's go against what I just said and always forget this particular instance. What? <laughs> just go back to 9-11. <laughs> so two weeks after this two-week massacre, two, uh, 120,000 people were dead um, and reported Sheesh. to Himmler and Hitler. One of them replied, better to shoot two, f- two poles too many than two poles too few. That's clever. Yeah. I like that. And whoever I mean, they said horrible. that to was immediately confused. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, after the massacre, the Nazis were getting their ass blasted. As you said, the, the Red Army was just waiting for them to they finish up that. doing Nazi stuff. And again, this unit had to become real soldiers, which they weren't. Um, and the unit, again, was decimated. They started at around 4,000 units, mainly murderers and rapists. And by the end of uh, the particular battle, which I didn't write down, they were down to 250. Wow. That's more Jesus. than decimated. That's decimated, crazy. decimated means one out of ten is dead. That's more <laughs> than that. Unfortunately, Daryl Wanger was wounded and escaped. And towards the end of the war, when all the Nazis were fleeing off to South America and the hills of Europe, Daryl Wanger fled to France, where he took a new name. Uh, Pronounce it and- now. Uh, he didn't say. But can oh. you guys ask me the question? Oh, Travis, how did this gentleman die? How did this gentleman die? Yes. We, <laughs> so he decided in 1945 to go hide out in a French hunting lodge. And thankfully, a Jewish person was like, wait a minute. Are you that fucker that was making soap out of my aunt? It's always a Jew. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and uh, he was arrested. And <laughs> arrested wow, by it? the... Yeah, he was arrested by the French. He got the shit kicked out of him then, and the French were like, we could go through, you know, um, the legal system and all this stuff, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to turn you over to the Poles. Because <laughs> the Warsaw Uprising, we know what you did, you motherfucker. So they turned them o- he turned him over to the Polish, and uh, the, the Polish had fun with him in jail, and he died of his ill treatment to oh, oh, Polish soldiers. Oh, no. Hopefully they made it really slow and painful. Yeah. This guy's a piece of shit. I want to put I'm a scrotum sure in did. a waffle iron. <laughs> yeah. And one thing I would like to mention before we move on was that um, I think we've talked about in the past about how, I mean, it's obviously given neo-Nazis are really dumb. We've talked about how I think Ger- uh, how Hitler would be like, oh, dude, these Florida skinheads, totally the pure Aryan race. No, no nothing <laughs> wrong here. <laughs> um... So Durlwanger and his men, I, I, I think I've made the case that they were pretty much the scum of Germany. They were all criminals. Yes. Um, and Especially the Nazis, with the child murder. Yeah, and the Nazis were actually disgusted in them. Yeah, but, of wild. course, in 2016, a group of uneducated fucktards formed the Wolf's Brigade 44. And the 44 was code for DD, or Division Durlwanger. And they took the same cross grenades as their logo, oh. the crossed ma- potato mashers. And were officially banned in Germany in 2020. I don't know how I had to ban them. I feel like you just ban them right out, right? <laughs> Took two this years. Ugly. But <laughs> yeah. There you go. You wow. know, it's weird. You tell us this whole story, and you you didn't mention that uh, Daryl Wanger was black. He, uh, I just Google imaged him, Whoa. and uh, you wouldn't oh. think from a story like this. But, uh, yeah, he really made his way up there. Wait, did you take a look at him? Yeah, I'm looking at him right now. He looks like Magic on. Johnson. <laughs> he kind of looks like that one. Uh, hmm. He no, he doesn't. I was trying to lighten the mood with well, stupidity. I mean, okay, I, I actually just want to put a picture of him up there because he looks fucking weird. 
He looks like an alien. Yeah. Oh, he looks like Roger from American Dad. No way. We That's all like him. Right. Roger from American Dad. Classic. <laughs> he does oh, look he looks like, like Roger a shrunken from skull Dad. right there. He's emaciated. <laughs> He's like, no thoughts at all. Just do it. That guy looks like, you know, a, He's like. He's kind of got a, a little bit of Albert Fish. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like those tins with like cookies in them that have like little little kids on oh, them and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, it, imagine oh, yeah. I can imagine his picture on a tin, but inside is just like a bunch of wet dildos. <laughs> yeah. That's what I imagine. I don't know. He I'm, looks like a sicko. Yeah, very. Piece of shit's probably getting fucked in hell or some shit. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Mike, if you're Satan, what do you do to this fucker? Lay it on me. I don't know. I'd be fucking. He'd be doing something terrible. Listen up, bricks. Tell me there's something years. terrible. Get creative. You're Satan. Uh, probably. I uh, probably the worst thing. Probably had. Probably gangbang every hole. Probably. That's the worst thing. Hell. Women sign See? up for that for a thousand. Uh, yeah, for five hundred dollars. He might like thing. that. Maybe he has an OnlyFans in hell. Maybe he's making money. That's why. Yeah, your your life sentence is to fulfill these only hand uh, <laughs> OnlyFans agreements. I don't know. Are there agreements on OnlyFans? I don't know. He's probably really Mike, hot thought, down there. I thought you were gonna be like every time he tried to do a kickflip, his trucks broke. That's, that's too easy, Travis. Come on, <laughs> King Pins. Okay, all right, wow. Tom. I I hear you may have some uplifting, maybe more than this guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, well we can have some fun. Okay. Thank God. Thank fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Colin. I'll probably um, I'm, I'm gonna give you, give you the floor whenever you go like this. Like I'm pointing with my finger for those at home. Yeah, because All I right. did some research, and uh, with you, your knowledge, your of, of battle history, you're gonna want to step in here. Okay? Oh boy. <laughs> okay. I got things to say, but it'll be fun. Okay, tonight for my share of the show, Audie yeah. Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Oh, you say? Yeah. Our lovely editor Zwick was talking about him. Okay. Um. Just before we continue, I don't know if you guys heard, but Mike said Eddie Murphy, so we'll go with that. Uh, <laughs> the way you said it sounded like, like uh, Eddie Murphy, kind of. <laughs> We're talking about Eddie Murphy, okay? Where okay. are we going to talk about coming to America? I love that movie. I we are. We're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a, a specific American. No, we're talking about Audie Murphy. Oh, uh, okay. I'm sorry to confuse you, Mike. Sorry, uh, Mike Audie Murphy is for the. Shrek. He is the most decorated American soldier in history. The really? most. Yes. Really. He did more than anyone else, and he was on our team. Okay. Yeah. No way. Yeah. You fucking lying. He did it. Okay. Not Dude, only did this was guy he the invent the montage. What's that? Did this guy invent the montage? He, like I'm just, oh, he's the. I already got the guy? montage playing in my my head right now. Look, man, Is this guy. We're, we'll get into what he did. Okay. Possibly what he didn't do. All right. Not only was he the finest soldier ever to exist. But he was a songwriter, an actor, an investor, oh. and a rancher. He is the greatest of the greatest generation. Which leads me to my first point of this entire presentation. Shame on Zwick. Now, Zwick recommended I cover this gentleman. <laughs> Zwick, you listen to the show. You listen to every show. We pay you to listen to the show. Um, you know what the premise is. How dare you? I am a busy <laughs> man. I don't have... All day to go do some research and go, ah, I'm not going to do it. Look, Audie Murphy's whole story is so inspiring and so in-depth that I got to say up front, it's a, what we're doing is a really, really thin slice of this. Okay? How thin? Very thin. There's a lot of stuff. It runs deep with Audie Murphy. So we're going to cover okay. some basics. I know Colin's going to want to punch me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking tingling right now. Because I, I like this. Because there was so much I was reading through. I'm like, this guy. I, all right, can I say that, that you are a a a battlefield specialist of sorts? Uh, I I would say I have a uh, a broad interest in battles. Okay, so my ignorance will not only infuriate you, but perhaps <laughs> cause some uh, palpitations. I like this. <laughs> Just getting it I've out there, man. I got my defibrillator man. ready to go. Yeah, I might, I might sound away, but I'm on your team. Okay. Anyway, born June twentieth, 
1925, Audie Murphy, Murphy was born into a poor-ass sharecropping Irish family in Hunt County, Texas. Dicks. You just said poor six different ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his father was a pale Irish slob who fucked his wife too many times and wasn't too keen on keeping his 12 results fed. Fuck. Now, <laughs> oh. in Audie's teens, his father ran away, probably to Mexico. Who knows? Audie had to help his mother raise the younger siblings, uh, which got even harder at the age of 16 when his mother died. Sheesh. Mm. Fuck. That blows. Now him and his older sister basically raised a bunch of kids. Uh, eventually, some of them went away to orphanages because it's a lot of kids, especially when they're your brothers and sisters. You Gotta know, go. How, how are you going to have future? Trick question. So they work shitty jobs and cover the costs of, uh, you know, living in Mountain Dew. Yeah. He became crafty. Got got a rifle. Started shooting little animals to feed the family. Crafty. Yes. Crafty. Okay. Some Appalachian barbecue. Got to feed the family. <laughs> well, of course, man. I mean, hot animal stew. You got to keep everyone fed. And, it's probably uh, the Great Depression, right, around this time? Or uh, Yeah, this is, uh, well, he's he's like 16 around now, and it's, he was born in 1925. Yeah, we're talking about 1930s, so that's pretty spot on. No, uh, 1940s, got- and... Uh, we're getting there. He's in Texas. Mike's he's a secret a, genius. He's in Hunt County, Texas. Do you know anything <laughs> no. about Hunt County, Texas? Sounds like someone that makes ketchup. Or yes. Something. And that's it. <laughs> it is. Oh, shit. Oh, Hines County. Right. Oh, fuck. I got to say, I made rabbit stew one time, man. It's not worth it because those bones are small. They're tiny little bones. You don't eat those, you fucking... Yeah, but you gotta, you're gotta. you taking a slurp, and you're like, I just got a fucking vertebrae in my throat. You strain the rabbit, you idiot. Uh, <laughs> what does rabbit taste like? It tastes like a wallet. Ugh. Yeah, it's gamey. Because it's fucking game. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Audie, he worked as a cotton picker for some time, earning a buck a day. And then he did some other jobs Ooh. that totally sucked, which is very American. As we all have the potential to be multimillionaires with neat jobs that other people will be interested about, uh, but we choose not to be. Roastmortem.com slash Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Roastmortemcast. Right. And if you're familiar with history at all, American history, yes. you know oh, that God. in December of 1941, America's first 9-11 happened, which was Pearl Harbor. Okay. <laughs> it was nasty. Yep. Dude, they, Audie felt Cody, the need. You, Cody, you literally live like three blocks in Pearl Harbor, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I see fucking, like, road signs that, like, point to it like a Disney World, even though it's, like, the site of, like, one of America's, like, deepest trash tragedies. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, like, good food places. Pearl Harbor. Yeah, come get your autograph with uh, the USS Idaho, man. <laughs> it's Arizona. <laughs> Arizona. Is there, like, any knockoff, like, food places like that? Uh, like... Or like Pearl Harbor themed or anything like that around there. Pearl Harbor yeah, themed. Yeah, yeah, Pearl Harbor is Pearl Harbor <laughs> themed, you idiot. The the, the Pearl Harbor. <laughs> I don't know, like you have a restaurant yeah. with like planes and shit inside, like a blown. I don't know. Yeah, like a, well, like a restaurant that has a- like <laughs> imagine Clippy, but instead of being a paperclip, it's an airplane Fear with like said. you know white <laughs> Mickey Mouse gloves going like yeah. right this way. Cody, <laughs> any dive bomb uh, bars around you? <laughs> oh, we, love Pearl it. Harbor themed? I can't yeah. imagine. Okay. I well, absolutely can't imagine. But, like, I, I I am seeing, like, a fictional <laughs> vision of, like, you know how, like, fucking, like, Bennigan's, like, puts shit up on the wall? They yeah. just have, like, like fucking World Images, War II trophies. Uh, like, here's a pierced, like, fucking uh, German helmet. Here's a... Why, why am I saying German? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Well, like, your Friday is that's like, here's your local well, high school. Sorry for what I said. I started this whole yeah. thing. Yeah, Drink Mike here, started please, this God. deep conversation. All well, right, to wrap up Pearl this Harbor bit, there are, no, there, there are several TGIF Fridays in the area. <laughs> they all have shit on the walls that has been taken out of the water, uh, which is the remnants of Japanese soldiers. Okay? <laughs> Let's continue the episode. So... Audie's like, oh my god, Pearl Harbor, I can't believe it, I gotta serve my country. So, to be fair, I too would sign up to put my life on the line, instead of mulling around a place like Hunt County, Texas. Okay. Way more exciting. Imagine doing 90 years in Hunt County, Texas for no reason. You could could do three years having fun overseas, with no debt. So... 
He was turned away by all branches of the military for being underage, underweight, and too short. There's no way that any European or Japanese broad would accept his flavor of uh, American seed at a measly 5'5", which he remained his whole life, by the way. So... I wait. No, I feel like I. Sorry, I feel like I've told the story on the show, but I kind of want to share it, Colin. Um, I used to be in the in high school. I used to be in the marching band. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, you you know, this one time, this one time in band camp, right? But uh, <laughs> they'd always, I guess, because like, oh, dude, they're marching. Like, let's send army, navy, re- like marine c- recruiters to these like events. And I remember there the the marine Hummer that had like a full system hooked up. Right, like subs in the back and everything's like, this is what the Marines are like, bro. <laughs> and they see me like, you know, we're both big guys. I used to have uh, the college, uh, the high school football team coach being like, you should join the football team. Like, nah, dude, I'm a video guy. <laughs> um, but this dude sees me, I guess, from behind and I'm walking with my mellophone or whatever. He's like, hey, man, like how many pull ups can you do? You want to join the Marines fight for your country? And I had like two hot dogs that I had just bought from <laughs> like the convenience or the fucking corner thing. I turn around, I'm like, huh? And he's like, no, 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 you're good, bro. <laughs> Keep going. Keep yeah, going. buddy. <laughs> Not you, the the slightly slimmer fat kid. Not you. <laughs> just, so Audi just seems like he has dribbling the... down your chin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think Audi had the opposite problem. He's a little scrawny straw boy. Yeah. Um. So he's he's 17. When he tries to okay. go sign up. So we know that there's an issue, issue with that. As I mentioned, he's underage. E- he needs um, to eat more hot dogs. Beef up. Right. Well, that's exactly what he did. He went back home. He ate a lot more hot dogs and animal stew. Oh, nice. Ah. And he stacked on 12 pounds over Sheesh. a couple months to meet the weight limitation. And he had his sister forge some identification to work around that whole age thing. Bam. God bless America. <laughs> Audie's military career begins with the U.S. Army. It's not where he wanted to go first. He wanted to be a Marine, but, you know, we, we all dream. After his training, Audie was shipped to Casablanca, French Morocco. Oh. Very sexy. Nothing really happened there. That was a training place. You know, the, uh, America already had, had a, uh, they figured that out. You know, you sent some troops there. We got numbers. Sounds like a nice place. Don't fuck with us, okay? We got heroin. We're not going to have it till after the war, okay? We're going to save our heroin <laughs> responsibly. Wait, now, that's the Humphrey yeah. Bogart chilled, right? Yeah, he did it. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he's, he was just chilling there. Mm-hmm. He had uh, his he had Twitch his... stream <laughs> in Casablanca. He's using yeah, gamer. That's words. exactly it. He just smoked cigarettes, which was basically like Among Us, but for lungs. Now, he and his fellow oh. troops were occupying the area and continued training. There, he was promoted to first class private. As I mentioned, didn't see any action there. Next stop, Sicily. Home oh. of men whose occupations have no description. Under <laughs> the command of Lieutenant George S. Patton, he sailed to Tunisia. Oh, no, from Tunisia, excuse me, for the Allied invasion of Sicily, landing in Lakata in, uh, in July, uh, July, July 10th. He does this, okay? Remember that. It's not that important, but remember. All right. Um, Audi was promoted to Corporal. And in celebration, he killed two fleeing Skunzat officers. Okay, now that's <laughs> not. Off. That's not Tom, really. Did you just say a racial slur? What's a Skunzat? Okay, so here we go. I tried to yeah. make up a racial slur. That's what I came up with because it's not actually Actions. one. Skunzat. Yeah, Mike, yeah, you can't say that on the fucking hot mic. As of tonight, you can't. But yeah, that was a made-up word. It's a slur. But do you Tom guys just made a slur? You can't what? say slurs on our podcast, guys. But you <laughs> know where I was going out. with it, right? You know where I was off to with a fun word it. like that. Sure. General Eisenhower decided it was time to make a move on the rest of Italy. Now, during a skirmish, Audie and two buddies were confronted by some Nazi troops who took out his two friends. Very upsetting. Audie oh. quickly threw a hand grenade towards the direction of the enemy fire, killing five he... worst mongers and one below. Damn. <laughs> oh, he pulled oh. the pin. Good. Yep. <laughs> he did. Gotta rank up. <laughs> oh, he's about to, yes. Uh, he was part of the capture of four and killing three more Nazis during the Allies' invasions uh, in Sicily, um, earning him a promotion to sergeant. Congratulations. Sheesh. You did it. Nice. Allied troops then moved into Rome. Via Anzio Beach. Like many people before and after our hero, 
Audie spent two to three weeks diarrheaing all over the place. It was a requisite. <laughs> he became ill with malaria. After his recovery, he went right back to battle. I like how you said he pooped out of his ass and then got malaria. Not that malaria made him poop out of his ass. Cody, I'm always on the setup. Fucking chicken and egg. I like this. I'm getting ready for the IRS, okay? Um, he, oh, shit. He returned just in time to fight the battle of Cis Cisterna. Colin, do you know anything about this? Yeah, so Cisterna, uh, the whole Anzio landing was kind of a fiasco. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Gallipoli at all. It's the First World War battle. Uh, the First World War, these uh, the British tried to land on a beach, and they landed at the foot of a beach, and above them, you know, 80 feet in the air, was a giant cliff with a bunch of Turks. And it turned into this nightmare that lasted months. It cost Churchill Ooh. his job. It was a big deal. Fuck. This is that. This is the World War II version of that at Anzio. Um, we actually covered an episode uh, not too long ago. Monte Cassino was this massive. Basically, what happens is uh, Mussolini is overthrown by the Italian people, uh, and the Germans realize that that's pretty much a, a, a highway for the Allies to access southern Germany. So they take over the country, um, and they they really create these really strong defensive lines all the way up the boot of Italy. Famously, um, Hannibal and, and Napoleon invaded successfully Italy through the, um, through the top portion. Napoleon said the only way to enter Italy, it's like a boot through the top. Um, it's really hard to invade and conquer Italy from the south. Uh, only Bel uh, Belisarius uh, of the... Uh, uh, the what is it, Byzantine Empire uh, was able to do it. Everybody else has failed. The Allies are finding out why, because it's a very narrow little column split in the middle by these mountain ra uh, this mountain range of the Apennines or Apennines, and so it's really easy for uh, for a defending force to just create trenches, covering fire, use artillery, um, and the Germans are really fucking good at it. Uh, so they're just, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, they're having a hard time getting north. Uh, they're just, they're losing a ton of material, a ton of, uh, men. It's actually the, in, in some sources, the, uh, Germans who are fighting in Italy refer, say it's worse than Stalingrad. The guys that have been at Stalingrad and end up fighting in Italy say that the, the conditions in the fighting there is more vicious than what they remember at Stalingrad. Wow. Damn. So in order to try and speed this process up, the Allies decide that they're going to try and do a beach landing at Anzio, um, get around some of these defensive positions that the Germans have, and get a straight shot to Rome. What they do is they pick a shitty spot for it, though. And at Anzio, they they kind of, uh, instead of whole hogging one thing, they half-ass a bunch. Uh, so they try and split the difference by putting pressure on the defensive position and doing a naval landing here, or an amphibious landing. But what they should have done is, is one or the other. Um, and then for about, I think it's four or five months, the Allied forces get stuck on the beaches at Anzio. They're pinned down. Uh, they are just under constant artillery fire from uh, well-dug-in, well-fortified positions, uh, and the Germans are just really beating the shit out of them. Uh, I believe that is where the famous war correspondent Ernie Pyle dies. I believe it's at Anzio. Huh. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's a pretty famous shit show uh, for the Allies, and uh, it, it did the exact opposite of what they intended it to do. Instead of it being this, like, quick, successful little backdoor operation, it ends up being this, uh, this slow-burning waste where they're now, now they've got to pour more men and equipment into this new front that is also taking time and energy away from their, uh, their objective. Got it. Go in through the top of the boot. Yeah. Well, if you ever want to invade Italy, go through, uh, go through the top where the Alps are. I know. And, well, and so yeah. our boy Adi is like there being like, I know you guys are all fucking up, but I'm doing good. Just throwing grenades at Nazis. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so he returns just in time to fight in the first battle of Cisterna, a bloody, unsuccessful campaign for the allies. 
Audi managed to blow up a German tank after being held up in a barn for a month or so. Uh, he was rewarded for a w- with a bronze star and a week of embarrassing diarrhea again, as the malaria <laughs> is just terrible in this area. Got it. Uh, mosquitoes here and there. So after some more, but tra- he probably got good pizza though, right? Oh yeah, probably. <sighs> I don't know if the ovens were on. Okay, man, it was probably <laughs> okay. just cold meatballs. And a Domino's, yeah. like Germany, shit. <laughs> Germany was using all of the ovens at the time. Oh Jesus oh, Christ, Cody! Jesus. They know the microwaves. They know the DiGiorno. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mike, um, g- good question. We'll have to come back to that one. Um, so he and his men. <sighs> Jeez, hold on a second. I got to be sad here. You can recover from that as long as you <laughs> need after to. Some more training, right? <laughs> so after some more training, Audie and his men went to fight in the second battle of Cisterna, and action from th- there was action from uh, May 29th to May 21st that put Val Montone and. Labico under the Allied control. Rome was liberated just a few days later. So he and his men were moved to France, where Audi went from ass kicker to full on anus destroyer. During oh. <laughs> one of his first conflicts, German soldiers uh, soldiers snuck, snuck up on him in a, a vineyard of all places. Oh. Looking at well, grapes, all of a sudden you're vines. looking at bullets. Now, Audi killed two Germans in the field. And then he chased a bunch of others into a house. He's a fucking with savage. some machine gun. He was just like, get the fuck out of here. He did it. Damn. He, just, he swat him away. So the Germans played a nasty trick, and they pretended that, to surrender from the house. Um, oh. So when Audie's best friend went up there to check on the surrender, they shot that dude dead. He baited his teammate. Fucked baited. Up. Baited. So a furious Audie <laughs> basically uh, ate his fuck spinach and then marched up to the house by himself alone, killed six, wounded two, and took 11 Germans prisoner Sheesh. by himself with nothing Dang. but a toothpick. Fuck it. Big dick fucking Aud- Audie over here. Damn. <laughs> he is, this guy is flying. I mean, oof, gotta. So now there are many more amazing attacks that uh, Audie was involved with. Got to look into it. Once again, I'm very mad at Zwick because this either deserved a uh, full full episode or not to be covered on the show, as this guy seemed a okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> check it out in time. In fact, if you uh, want to read about it, Audie wrote a book about his time in the military called To Hell and Back. And he stars in the movie. Yes, yeah, so I was going to mention that, too. Movie. Movie. Huh? I always get these Hollywood yeah. fucks. I just do it to myself, and here I am. <laughs> Shout out to Zwick. We will be talking. <laughs> oh, shit. Now, January 26, 1945, Audi and 40 of his men stationed on a road, uh, a roadway near the German town of Holtzwer, protecting this road from German occupation. Uh, this was an American stronghold. They were trying to keep this clear so they can move in and plan whatever attack. I forget what battle this was. I... But, but this is an important thing that these 40 men hold down this road. Make sure Germans stay away. So it seemed to be a relatively quiet... Operation Getaway, Germans. Yeah, get no the Germans hell out of here. Fly. <laughs> here we are. Now, what seemed to be a relatively quiet patrol turned into Fucktown when 250 Nazis with six tanks came up asking for their road back. Uh-oh. Oh, they're taking back what was taken from them. Hello, can I have my road back? Yeah. <laughs> I hate to bother schnell, you schnell. Move. But me and my friends And their tanks was hoping to get the road back Now Audi ordered his men To take defensive positions Back towards the forest line Which was near the road uh, The men left and Audi stayed At a machine gun nest Calling for Ooh. artillery strikes As the 250 Nazis came charging American artillery rained down Creating uh, a hellscape For this Nazi troops to, to walk across. Uh, when the artillery command co- commander asked how close the Germans were to his position, he screamed, just hold the phone and I'll tell you, and I'll let you talk to one of the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> that is like the most this. American soldier stereotype I can think of. With a cigar John McLean is fuck. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Keep in mind, he was always five foot five. I don't know. I'm not going to judge. That makes him more amazing. badass, not yeah, less. Yeah, he's not a horse, though, or some yeah, shit. Yeah, he's, like, mm-hmm. he's like, come to France, they said. Have a glass of wine, they said. <laughs> <laughs> so Murphy positioned himself on top of a tank destroyer that was on fire. Sheesh. This was 
it, it was basically not functioning, but the machine gun turret was still intact. So he managed to stay on the phone. Battlefield phone. <laughs> World War II, imagine that. This is not just iPhone shit. This is a reception this is a, sucks. Is he wearing a backpack phone? That's For, what I only can think of. Kind of. It's like a suitcase thing, right? Yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a radio. It's a battery powered radio with a crank on the back. The whole Sheesh. deal. Yeah. So he's staying on that thing, continuing to direct an airstrike while mowing down advancing Nazis, <laughs> Nazis and tanks for an entire hour. The only reason he stopped this was because he ran out of ammo. Now, I thought you were going to say because he needed to eat a ham sandwich or something. <laughs> and he could only hold one hand on the phone. No, he's on the <laughs> phone the entire time. The Nazis fired shell after shell at Audi. He took some shra uh, shrapnel to the leg, and he still oh. kept fighting. Sheesh. Damn. Now, he was fully expecting to die. In fact, when the event was over, the only thought he had was, how come I'm not dead? <laughs> Why for not live? Yeah. Why for not dead? Simulation, sir. Oh, here's a fun reality check for all you adults out there. He was 19 when he was doing this. <laughs> <laughs> that was like Call of Duty back then. Why made me feel them. like shit? <laughs> I, well, you can talk to Zwick also if you want. Um, now, Audi had personally killed or wounded at least 50 enemy troops and directed artillery against dozens more in this conflict. Damn. Wow. Even after reaching safety, he refused to be evacuated from the field and instead rallied his men in a counterattack that drove the Germans back from the woods. Sheesh. With shrapnel in them? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And this is, uh, Tom, this is the Colmar Pocket. Yes. Is the name of the battle. And this is important because what it is, is it's a bulge in the Allied line in the southern part of the... the uh, advance access for the allies so down where the uh alsace lorraine area where the f the germans invaded france in that like wooded area uh the vosges mountain or um uh forest is right there it is uh remembered by americans that were there this is the worst fighting that americans saw hmm. uh in, in many accounts of it being like our version of what the uh the eastern front looked like wow um, these this is where the americans are getting a taste of some of the most brutal combat of world war ii uh, because it's some of the better uh german units are being funneled into this little pocket it's the last kind of gasp that because it's post uh, battle of the bulge so any of the units that survived that have been pulled back to this area and, and are trying to keep some kind of uh, momentum or, or offensive um, capability on the Allied front here. Um, so it's a desperate, desperate struggle. And this is, uh, Audie Murphy is, is, you know, one amongst many when it comes to people doing incredible shit uh, in the Colmar pocket. It, as, a 19 -year -old. as a 19-year-old. As a 19-year-old. Yeah, right. That's fucking incredible. Yeah, it's it's really amazing stuff, which is another reason I'm angry at Zwick, because I feel like this guy needs, like, more coverage than this, like, fit him into a third of an episode. Um, Fuck you, Zwick. Yeah. Yeah, when I was 19, I was just concerned about if I'd get the new sidekick. I was playing Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I was playing Call of Duty. You're still playing Pokemon. You You're still playing Call of Duty. No, I moved on. It's Counter-Strike now. Wow. So I've stepped Flash up my banana. game. Now, isn't isn't uh, Audie Murphy some kind of cheat code you can use in Counter-Strike, according to the gamers? I don't know, maybe. No, uh, I think that was think Wick it was... saying it was Medal of Honor that Medal you can of Honor, get Audie uh, Murphy into. Oh, I don't Audie know. Mur Those are all the same to me, because I have a job. Um, I so think here in, in Medal of Honor, if you put oh, Audie Mur you. Murphy as the cheat code, you go into, like, God mode, where you, like, can't take damage. And so it's like Mario when you're, like, bright and light up yeah. and you change yeah. different colors and stuff? Yeah, you're like, this guy is so badass that, like, you can't die. <laughs> yeah, you have an infinite ammo and infinite grenades. Imagine he, he's up there shooting, and the entire time he's he's mowing down people, calling in airstrikes. The only thing he hears is <laughs> now that shit only lasts like fifteen seconds in the game. An hour of that, amazing. So, wow. <laughs> with that, let's get some totals in here. He killed Math? he killed two hundred and forty Germans. Jeez. Those are not easy things to kill. No. It's Very kill greasy. Streak. He was wounded three times. Damn. Not including malaria and embarrassing diarrhea that comes with said. It's not wound. You know he had fucking uh, that hole was there already. Underwear. 
<laughs> he was basically tire marks. Yeah, he couldn't escape the name. He could he could have killed a thousand Germans, and they'd be like, they still so call poopy him ass, probably poopy ass. Probably that's terrible. Either way, <laughs> you're uh, a he poopy ass. Shy's ass. <laughs> he earned thirty three <laughs> awards for his bravery Sheesh. and efforts, making him the most decorated American soldier wow. in history. Wow. Uh, some Dang. of them come from came from other countries. He got himself one of the worst cases of PTSD. So, so we're going to get into the Hollywood lifestyle of Audie Murphy. Now we're going to have some fun on the show. So, all right. So, Tom, like we're going from like this American hero. And what does Hollywood, what does L.A. do to this American healer hero? Mm. <laughs> Fair enough. So after the war, this is the PTSD is from Hollywood, by the way. It's not from the war. It's fine. Uh, um, yeah, so after the war. <laughs> Audie kicked around. Uh, he kicked around the military for a bit longer. He did some training stuff. He was, um, you know, his reserve status. But eventually, his focus moved to Hollywood. Um, honestly, I, I just feel like doing this show. Even though I've only been to L.A. once, I cannot escape this place. I'm constantly talking about it with the subjects, the 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 musicians I cover, all these ah. asshole, um, with the exception of Cary Grant actors that we you love L.A. I'm I'm gonna go there and die with the rest of them. Hey, soon, it's, okay? it's warm there <laughs> as it melts. Uh, famous producer James Cagney read an article about Audie, uh, Audie, Audie's trail of dead Nazis and thought to himself, "I need this guy on my team." Rightfully so. Cagney reached out to Audie and got him on board with some uh, acting prep lessons. You know, the, he learned about a look in a camera, learned about yes, to put on makeup, voice, dancing, the whole <laughs> shebang. <laughs> <laughs> now, by 1947, Cagney and Audie had a falling out, so Cagney didn't actually put him any, in any movies. But, however, it's fine. Hollywood writer da David, S David McClure, a.k.a. Speck, befriended Murphy and collaborated with him on Murphy's 1949 book, To Hell and Back, previously mentioned. Universal Studios then signs Murphy to a seven-year deal oh. uh, worth 250 two, not 250 $2,500 a week back then. That's Sheesh. like, uh, it's a lot of money. You know, yes. I guess the first movie that he was in? No, no, this is a seven year studio contract. I know, but it is the first movie of the contract. Just, just oh, the first movie out. he went on to do was a. Uh, Wait, a no, 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 I want to guess it. Don't. The You're Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Stop. No. Correct. Ugh, that's pretty good. Correct. Travis. <laughs> sure. <laughs> pretty might good. Do that. Might good. do that. You're a fucking mind reader. He's good. Yeah. So uh, he did go on to make 40 films. His first movie was Billy, uh, a Billy the Kid flick called The Kid from Texas. Oh. He was actually from Texas. So, you know. Kind of makes sense. That's yeah. fine. It works. Uh, yeah. On his next yeah. film, he met, uh, he met his wife, Wanda Hendricks, a film called Sierra, and Wanda was the star. So Wanda was uh, a little hottie. We haven't talked about tits a while on the show, so... Uh, she mm. had him. Yeah, a picture of her? She's a hottie. Yeah, I'll throw one in the chat. Give me a second, guys. I mean, this isn't that important because I'm not covering it that much. But... She got a big ass forehead. Yeah, but <laughs> more room for your penis. I guess so. Uh, you like write stuff on her head. You sure can. <laughs> you write someone on, you know, how big do you write that you need a forehead that big? <laughs> you like making like, that you can draw something. Fair enough. Oh, look at that. Well, guy. I, she she's got triangle tits probably. <laughs> they all have tri. Every woman has that's triangle fine. tits. That's, she looks that's like fine. a 1940s Christina Ricci. She's very beautiful. That's fine. Oh yeah, actually that's pretty spot on. I wish she was my wife. Uh, Mike, we yeah. all have a good time. All right. Anyway, Wanda's this little hottie, right? So they get married in 1949, and within months they were divorced. Uh oh. Audie, up, uh, baby. Audie was a traditional guy. He was really into you know. Like the, the 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 American household man provides things, you know Jordan Peterson stuff. This is what he was into. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so Audie, um, he's like, you can't work anymore, even though she was making a lot more money than him. So, um, oh. when she, you know, give a little lip, he would beat her senseless and uh, hold her up at gunpoint from time to time. I was like, cool. L.A. baby. Oh, jeez. So he's like, hey, uh, I got this uh, helmet. You should put this on, girl. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, Travis, I wasn't going to put there, but what I was going to do is pose this question to you. Uh -huh. This guy this guy kills 240 Nazis, right? And he beats one wife. Now, is he a bad guy? Did he kill 240 Nazis? Like, did, like is, is that enough? Nazis who could have done a lot worse to their wives? 
how many Nazis are deducted from this kill count for beating his wife. He's a douchebag. That's what he it. is. The way I look at it is those Nazis were coming for his wife anyway. Well, yeah. what I'm so saying he is... he stopped 250 Nazis beating up his wife and laid one on her. Right. So basically, the, the way you're seeing this, Cody, is anytime he, you know, she gives a little lip, he gives her the backhand, and then when she complains, he says, hey, you're not speaking German right now, are you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so my, you is, should, you know, be thankful. Yeah. Right. Hey, bitch, exactly. Was that Fritz? German? I just heard you speaking. Uh, <laughs> so what I'm saying is this, if a guy kills 240 Nazis and then goes home and beats his wife, does that make it 210 Nazis? I think I it's don't know. still I think it's 240 Nazis killed, but also kind of an asshole move to beat up your wife. Yes. Well, asterisk. Yeah. 240 confirmed, but asterisk. I'm just yes, I'm just saying like I'm just saying, there's a lot of people out there who use this term like punch a Nazi, right? Who yeah. probably never even done that. They would consider this man very cancelable. Where's the line here? Is he still a great American or is he just a killer American? I just, just posing a question. Dude. We're having fun here. Also, oh. like, Zwick, I, I why like did you do this to me? Well, hold on. No, Zwick, I think he got the nail on the head with the show because originally. And we haven't really done this at all because we just roast assholes. Um, originally, we were supposed to take people that we like and then dig up dirt on them. Right. So, like, this you're is... kind of doing that, Tom. <laughs> Does he change his ways at all? But I'm just saying, like, overall, like, the under over. You know, would you do without him because he I mean, hit a he woman? Does he change his ways? Does I've... he learn from his mistakes? I don't know yet. I don't if think you're he God, did. I think would he you spent hit the un... rest of his life. Go ahead. <laughs> if you're God, would you hit undo on Audie Murphy is pretty much what Tom is asking. Okay, yeah, a reset button. I don't think so. I think you. Uh, I think it's like so. It's the same thing. Like Muhammad Ali. Everybody loves Muhammad Ali. Great American, greatest of all time. Incredible athlete. Also, kind of a racist. Uh, at, for a long time, he didn't think blacks and whites should get married or go to school together. Uh, he didn't believe in interracial coupling in any form. Um, today, people would say that's pretty racist. At the time, he thought that was like you know. The smart move. No, we're not going to get together and like each other, so might as well keep everybody apart. Um, does that make him a bad guy? I, I don't think so. As long as you tell the whole story, I think that's the key. You can't say just the good shit about him. You have to say the bad shit too. Yeah, of yeah. course. If there's and a that's... PBS special. You got to mention the Nazis killed and the wives beaten. It, exactly. And, and that's like kind of the premise. You know, the show is like showing the whole bit, and it's just like, oh, did you like? Did you like Gandhi? Well, he liked to molest. Um, he, <laughs> like, molest. That's what I'm dealing with here is this crisis because this guy killed 240 zo- uh, like Nazis. Nazi zombies. zombies. Nazi zombies. Nazi zombies. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry for my Walking Dead commercial <laughs> intake. Um, Tom loves it's Call of Duty. 10 nukes. I just like this Call idea of, of like, okay, is, would you even call him a bad guy? He's just a douchebag. Ever. I would point. call him an extremely troubled person. Yeah. 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 I like that's, that's probably the PTSD that made him beat his wife. I think so, too. Right, go. but also here's... So, that's, so if, he, if he didn't kill those 240 Nazis, does he beat his wife? Good question. Right. Like the experience of doing that is what probably led to him, other than maybe Hollywood. And you know, maybe if he went to Hollywood, he beats his wife. And if he, be- and if he didn't beat his wife, how do you know he even killed those Nazis? It's like, you know, uh, if a bear shits in the woods, does it, you know, does anybody does know? The, does the yes. Pope have a pointy hat? Well, I mean, <laughs> does also. Does Tin Man have a sheet metal cock? These <laughs> questions are all <laughs> unanswerable. Also, where exactly. do you draw the line, though? Because we also had another guy on the show right before our dickhead Oscar Delvinger who had PTSD, but he just became a fucking uh, caco Rickus. demon. You see, a guy like him. <laughs> He would he if he had just beaten a wife. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Anyway, yeah. uh, I'm just posing the question. It's, it's just Texas, like, right? All I like I'm it. saying it's is philosophical. It, am I even saying that much about this guy? He was suffering. He he saw a lot of death yeah. all the way. So he had either skeletons way, in his closet. He, exactly. He had a lot of shit going on. He's so like Marshall he's, Mathers. Eventually, he had, because he had <laughs> dealt with fuck? so much, and he that's had written, true. No, I think Travis is onto something. He is exactly he, like don't Marshall encourage Mathers. this. Is Eminem's dad. <laughs> it's Eminem's dad. Yes. So either way, he has a lot going on. He had written that book. Um, he's he stars in a film adaptation of his own book. 
to hell and back. Like Marshall Mathers. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh. And more like Marshall Mathers, not so much Lena Dunham. Um, it was interesting. Wow. <laughs> now, he also, I mentioned before he was a songwriter, so he wrote beautiful country songs for artists like Bonnie Guitar, Harry Nilsson, Jimmy Bryant, and my favorite, Roy Clark. Oh, my favorites. Mm. Mm. Now, he also bred and raced horses at his ranch, the old Audie in Murphy Ranch in Southern California. He he's raced his horses studs? at the... What's that? He's into the studs? Uh, he's he's dude. He gets a little too deep into studs. Okay, he races Ooh. his horse at the Del Del Mar racetrack. He becomes quite fond of gambling and puts himself in compromising financial situations over and over again. Uh oh. Now in 1968, he stated that he lost two hundred and sixty thousand dollars on an Algerian oil deal, and he was dealing with the IRS, kind of sorting out all that mess. So, Sheesh. as good as he was at you know killing Nazis, he couldn't keep the books right, which mm. is a, a heinous American crime. Um, oh, he definitely yeah. should be tried for that one. Uh, <laughs> the man is worth looking into. I'm serious. I wasn't kidding before. He's got a lot of shit going on. A lot of battles he fought through. Extremely brave. Interesting Hollywood career. Um, one more thing. Just shame on you, Zwick. God damn it. Way too much info. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's busy, Zwick. Right. So now someone just asked me how he did it. Yo, how'd he do it, Tom? Okay. On May 28th, 1971, Murphy was killed when a private plane in which he was a passenger on crashed into Brush Mountain in Virginia. Ain't wow. that some shit? Wait, he got Stevie Ray Vaughn? Yes. Yes, he did. Damn. <laughs> Can't he trust did. those damn planes. I was going to say Kobe Bryant did, but that was a helicopter. Uh, Steve Ray Vaughn was also a helicopter. So with he's a Leonard Skinner. <laughs> he's, he's Skinner. He, Leonard Skinner. Yes. He, and they uh, died in a plane crash. He Bobby Vallied. He fucking Buddy Hollied. He did all these things. He yeah. John Denver. Yeah. At least he doesn't Argentinian soccer team. <laughs> yeah, that's <right>. good. <laughs> he, uh, well, that's fascinating. I think uh, I think you're right. Audie Murphy is worth. Actually, all three of these guys, I would definitely be interested in reading. Uh, reading about more in depth. Yeah, I I definitely interested. I want to read this book because I know that the the gentleman that helped him write it, uh, like really kind of you know, to hell and back. The author, oh, oh, where was his name again? Oh, excuse me, uh, David McClure. I know it's a really thorough book, and that he really pried him for every little detail. And Audie was fairly with it. Like he may have had some PTSD, but like when you're talking to him, he he seemed like a normal guy. Yeah. Um he he did deal with some like some drug problems with like sleeping pills and stuff, which I mean to be fair, back then they hooked you on anything. I feel like it, everyone yeah, in man. the forties and fifties were on some type of sleeping pill or amphetamine. Right. I think he he, he his PTSD though, I, I'm I think he slept with like a, a knife or like a loaded gun under his pillow or something for the rest of his life. Yeah, you I forgot I, I forgot to throw that in the script. Uh he a forty four Magnum. He really Jesus. Oh, Christ. Yeah, he was dealing with serious firepower. A uh, bear might attack me while I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> a Nazi bear, a fucking yeah. Nazi zombie bear might attack me in my sleep. I wanted to drop a guy in here and I'm not going to do a full download because it's. Uh, but did you know that there's a Nazi buried at Arlington Cemetery? No. What? Really? There is a Nazi that is. Uh, Buried, interred with the great American, with Audie Murphy, uh, who is also at uh, Arlington Cemetery. Him and JFK. A, a gentleman named Laurie Torney. He was a Finnish soldier. Are you guys familiar with the, the Winter War? Yeah. It was like, yeah. that's where the, I, I, the funniest thing about the Winter War is their weird ski artillery they have. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's this crazy war uh, fought between the Finns and the Soviets. The Soviets think that they're just going to roll. Uh, they end up completely unprepared, and this tiny Finnish army just runs circles around them on their cross-country skis. It's where you get, uh, have you ever heard of uh, Simo Haya? The, uh, he's uh, the most successful sniper in, of yeah. World War II. 500 oh, yeah. plus deaths. They called him the White Death. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've heard of that of his guy. camouflage. Yeah. Yeah, also, and uh, he, so he, the Finnish war is this nasty, yeah. terrible little fight. Laurie Torney is a soldier for the Finns. He's extremely um, 
successful. He's a very good soldier. Um, the Finns eventually have to sign, are forced to sign a, uh, a peace deal with the Russians. And so they end up uh, sending some of their soldiers back. They're allied with the Nazis in the fight against the Soviets. Right. So some of these Finn soldiers find their way over to Germany and they're getting trained to run kind of like underground warfare once the Soviets conquer Finland. They want to have some guys ready to, to do some unconventional stuff. While there, the Soviets attack uh, this po- portion of Germany where he's training. So he suits up in the Waffen SS's uniform, dons the uh, the swastika and fights very well for the Germans. Basically ends up kind of pulling a Yang journey and, and floats around wow. Scandinavia. Uh, end of the war, he ends up uh, with the uh, in the U.S. and enlists in, in like the mid 1950s. Enlists in the U.S. Army. Ends up in the Special Forces for ten years and dies in Vietnam. Wow. Whoa. Fighting the Vietnamese. He dies in a hell and he runs a uh, green he he runs a special forces camp in Vietnam. Um I believe he's in the book The Green Berets and uh and is awarded posthumously the Bronze Star and two Purple Hearts, and then is interred in 2000 or 2001. Uh, a group finds his bones, they identify him, and they bring him back to Arlington, and he is resting amongst the, the, the finest soldiers in U.S. history. Wow. That's God pretty damn. crazy. Ooh. I feel like that's like so many Nazi um, scientists of the war yeah. that became yeah, our greatest with, minds. Uh, Werner von Braun, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, my goodness. There you go. All right. So this has been awesome. Colin, I'm so happy you joined us because we didn't know what we were talking about with Thank this. Thank you. It was nice to meet you, too. No, yeah. awesome, guys. That, it was a lot of fun. It was great. And um, anytime, it was a blast. I, I thought uh, this is a lot of fun, a lot more relaxed than my, my normal dark little room with a script and reading. <laughs> so, well, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Give, us, give us a plug again before we head out. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're interested in in listening to um, military history, it's Cauldron Podcast: A History of the World, Battle by Battle, um, and it's on it's on all the things. You can check out Spotify, Apple, anything you uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Always, uh, if you can, rate, review, subscribe, yep, and yep, do yep, the yep, same yep, yep. thing for uh, roast mort. Roast Mortem. It helps. It's annoying, but it does help with uh, getting people to to find the show more. Yes, absolutely. Make sure to give Cauldron five stars, us one star, because we're we're looking to break the mold. We suck. Yeah, (laughs) we suck. (laughs) No, no, we don't suck. We're having fun. No, I just kid. I kid. Thank you so much for your time, man. We really appreciate it. It's it's nice to have a absolutely. And uh, if you guys, I want to return the the invitation. If you guys uh, individually each want to pick a battle at some point and come on and chat with me. I, I don't know if I can do the, the, the four-person-at-a-time thing with this because I want to open up the battle and talk right. the story. But yeah. if Am each I allowed one of you, to get drunk is the question. You absolutely are. I okay. encourage it. Actually, it's the only way to do it. So, <laughs> uh, But, yeah, if you guys want to pick a, a battle or a weapon or a, a soldier or anything in history, Ooh. you go ahead and find something and bring it on, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk like about it. Yeah, oh, well, hell like yeah, we'll be talking uh, off, off the official record, but, yes, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, All right. I want to do that, gentlemen. Dude. Thank you again. This was a lot of fun. Have a good night now. You know, right, right, thanks, yeah, you too, man. Peace. See ya. And if you want to follow us, you're already listening to the episode. You're, you're pretty much following us as it is. Um, yeah. There you go. You got us on your Spotify. You got us on your Apple. You got us on your RSS feed. Stitcher, if you use that, I don't know a single person who uses Stitcher. I want Stitcher. Are you? You're <laughs> a sick man. <laughs> Um, you can go to patreon.com slash roastmortemcast, show us some love, um, and love does equate to money. We all know that. I need money, please. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mike needs money. He needs hot pockets. I need money. They're cheap now because they got pocket. recalled. Um, guys, anything else you want to add to this? Thanks. Thank you for doing your research, everyone, except yes, for you, Mike. Uh, we'll be talking. Pleasure, yeah, Mike, uh, thanks for coming in with hot dogs for everyone. You sent yeah, through the USPS Those to Nathan me. hot dogs, you know, those bubble mailers. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. That's all the right, All right, Zwick, cue the song that goes. Dun, 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 our dun, outro. Dun, 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 dun.
Bye, everyone. All right, thanks for listening. Check out Cohen's podcast. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Shane. Bye, Key Shane. Thank you. Bicycle Shane. Thank you.